Hey, good morning. Welcome to You Garden TV. My name's Sean Ryan. We've got a really special guest today. I've worked with Adam Wilcock for many, I'm going to say decades probably. Probably. But it is. Lovely to see you. Good to see you as well. A, a lot of you will know this very familiar face, but if you don't, Adam is really modest. But him and his partner, John, have won numerous awards at Chelsea. Four gold awards. Yeah, four gold medals at the Chelsea Flower Show. Three BBC RHS People's Awards as well. We've won some silver medals, some silver gilt medals at uh, Chelsea and other RHS wow. shows as well. Been gardening since I was about five years of age, professionally for 36 years. Uh, yeah, and just love and adore Sean. Well, you know everything. Oh, yeah. I, I call myself a gardening geek, you know, a gardening nerd. I really am. Yeah. And, 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 and the wonderful thing is, you're going to learn so much from Adam over the next few hours and he's a proper hands-on gardener so well. he's not just a fancy garden designer him and his partner John you you actually run a gardening business yeah, we do, yeah. gardens well, out. you can tell from your hands look at the state of these hands look I mean you know dry skin do you know what actually you nulled got, yours is dry as mine <laughs> yeah we've, we've got proper gardeners hands we have well. yeah, yeah look at those yeah yeah, yeah. God, they yeah. are going to red aren't they they're, they're, they're in severe need of some moisture aren't they moisturizing but just thinking my I think my hands are about 20 years older than my face <laughs> anyway um We've got a brilliant three hours and say Adam will bring so many new things to the show. Bex is um, not with us today. She's going to be down on QVC later on today at five o'clock. So let's begin. We've got a free gift, which is fabulous. It's our 150 spring flying buzz. Saying spring, but actually, Adam, these are kind of spring and early summer, aren't they? Yeah, well, I mean, let's go through the list. Yeah. I mean, for instance, we've got the tulips, obviously, which are very early in the year. And well, even earlier, the anemone blander down here, these gorgeous little anemone blander. That's really blander. sweet, yeah, aren't Which they? are absolutely fantastic. I mean, I've actually got these starting to flower in my garden right now. And, and the great thing about these as well is the, um, let's just, let's move the, uh, oh, this by the way, one? it's these flowers you're getting, not these, just to point yeah. out. <laughs> so, there we go. I'm so, really jealous, I look so dowdy today. I was that all like flowery, I look so dowdy. So what have we got here, these the enemies? Are, yeah, these are enemy blunder, they're gonna start flowering from now. And they're fantastic because you don't see them, then one day they just open yeah, out and you've got these really fantastic, cute. beautiful, stunning flowers. Then obviously followed by the tulips, which are amazing, stunning tulips there. You've got the grape hyacinths, which will flower kind of mid to late spring, look absolutely amazing. Ixias, which are summer flowering, really gorgeous, great in pots, these, by the way, and then the alliums, the drumstick alliums at the back there, which are sort of um, ferrocephalon, which are about from May to June time. So I would say, Sean, really, you've got about five or six months here. Yeah of flower. These are your grape hyacinths. They're called grape hyacinths because if you hold them up the other way, they look like little bunches of grapes. These are your Ixias here, which are from South Africa, but they do very well in nice sunny position. Tulips, which will come back year after year. Even gorgeous foliage on these as well. So not just lovely flowers on oh, the anemone blonde. Yeah. They are real heart and mood lifters this time of year when they burst open. And these, the actualiums there, allium, and I always dread saying this word, spherocephalum. Spherocephalon. I'm not great at that I, I, either. I it really quick so you can't hear me fluffing it when I yeah. say it but so it, yeah, yeah. yeah it's very cephalon alliums yeah. drumstick alliums uh, but honestly perfect for planting right now all of those will come up won't they, they? they are yeah because yeah. I mean you might think hang on a minute tulips it's, it's, it's January but when you get these bulbs home you'll notice they're all firm they're all nice and solid so as long as the bulbs are solid and firm even though it's late planting some of these they'll be absolutely yeah. fine pop them in the ground don't worry about the little shoots are they ready and as a rule of thumb look at the depth of the bulb and then you want three times as much soil on top as the depth of the bulb plant them and they'll flower this year some of them might be flowering slightly later but they'll flower and they're worth 20 pounds and a little tip you need to put the off code in to get those which is ygtv0424 that is the free gift for every order. So if you do individual orders, you'll get several free gifts as well. We don't mind you being greedy. Now you can chat with us on Facebook, you can chat with us on YouTube, but also Stuart, our head of technical, set up an email. So if you want to send any pictures, you want to say hello to Adam or myself, it is ygtv at ugarden.com. Uh, and uh, I want to say hello to Margaret, who emailed in yesterday. That's, yeah, and, and you know, be brave. If you've got any sort of questions about the plants that yeah, we're bringing to you that we've not covered, just email yeah. in and we'll answer them I for mean, you. Adam is really knowledgeable. You'll you really catch me out no. one day. I, <laughs> I never have. There's uh, always more to learning gardening. There is, isn't there? Yeah, there yeah. is. Uh, also, don't forget, if you are spending over £40, you will get free postage, which is really good. I mean, we don't... Some of the items are quite big, quite heavy. Some of them will have 
postage of 6 99 but if you really can put together an order of £40 or more, you'll get free delivery as well. You need to use the code, of course, YGTV0402. So that covers everything. Hang on, no. What a load of rubbish I've just spoken, Adam. YGTV02. Oh, God. Hang on. Stop recording. Oh, no, we're live. <laughs> YGTV. There it is. 0424. How did I get that wrong? It happens sometimes. It's the time of year. So I'm normally good with it. That's honestly, that's that's a bit Bex normally gets wrong. And uh, that anyway, that even includes bulky stuff like the stroke. Once you spend over forty pounds, yeah. um, and, and the compost. Yeah. It's all well, cool. Yes. Brilliant. I'll get you two the off code next time, Adam. I haven't, got, I haven't got my glasses on. I might struggle to read that. Uh, wait, can you not see that? I can see that. Yeah, say, I'm not that big. Bad. Right, we've got loads of new items, though, and some favourites. Should we start with the favourites? Yeah, let's go for it, Sean. Absolutely. Uh, and we're going to start big, actually. We're going large today. We're going dinner plate size. Hey, actually, I bought in a dinner plate today. Yeah, stay there, Adam. As an example... Because um, these, Adam, these are, these are about eight inches. I mean, they don't call them dinner plate dahlias for no reason, do they, Sean? And that is literally because when these flowers mature, they will cover the width of a dinner plate. I there mean, you go. Yeah. <laughs> King of props. You could, could have brought a round one. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the ones we have at home. Yeah. They, but, won't, grow, they but, won't be square-shaped flowers. They'll be round. But eight inches. So that's the size. I mean... One of, that, one of those flowers could be that sort of size and round. Magnificent. Um, I mean, so you are getting five for nine, nine, ten. You can double up and go for ten for fourteen pounds and ninety-eight pence. I mean, I, I can only begin to imagine flowers that size. Yeah, and look at the colour range. Yeah, in that I mean, a real, real stunning colour range there. And you know, I do not give a monkey's about mixing up colours as well. No, there, I don't. There, there's a lot of stuff these days. You know. Uh, you know, snobbery. Oh, uh, snobbery, yeah, yeah follow the snobbery. colour wheel. And when, when have you ever walked through a field of wildflowers and said, oh, my goodness me, those yellow buttercups really clash with, the, you know, that red clover? Never. You've That's always a really thought, good analogy, yeah, yeah. You've always thought, oh, that looks so stunningly beautiful. So just do the same in your garden. If, if you don't want to do that, don't. But, you know, don't feel embarrassed about mixing colours. And these are just a fantastic range of colours. These are going to flower for month after month after month, make incredible cut flowers as yeah. well and one little tip for you if you wanted to have dahlias as cut flowers always cut them once the flowers are open if you cut them in bud they don't open in a vase y yes i've forgotten that yeah yeah so just wait for them to fully open then cut them if you cut them in a tight bud nothing more That's will happen a really good tip yeah but they'll last a good week 10 days as cut flowers indoors and also the more flowers you cut the more you encourage dahlias to flower as well and another little quick tip with these deadheading dahlias is great to keep them flowering and sometimes the dead flower heads look very much the same they do. as the new ones they do a very easy tip there is the flowers that are about to open the bud is nice and rounded the flower bud that's just gone over it's more of an acorn kind yeah, of shape yeah a bit more pointy yeah a bit more it? pointy yeah. so that's how you know which ones Good to tips, cut off. right in terms of where do we plant them and when do we plant them plant them dahlias love sunshine they, they originate from south america so they love sunshine a lovely open sunny position uh, somewhere reasonably sheltered and and that's about it really yeah. good draining soil i mean you, you, know, you could put some fertilizer in there. They, you know, they like a good feed as well. But you know, dahlias are really, really quite easy. And generally, I mean, in the olden days, they used to say to lift dahlias in the winter time and store the tuber somewhere frost-free in the winter. The way the climate's gone recently, I, I've left my dahlias in. Uh, and custom, customers might let their dailies in, and most years they do come back again the following year. But I mean, if you've got really wet, heavy soil, you could lift them later in the year. But really, if, if the soil's quite well drained, yeah, I wouldn't worry. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same. Most of my dailies do come back every year, yeah, yeah. Uh, unless it's a particularly bad winter. So you are getting these are the big dinner plate ones. That's Easy the size. Grow. Look at my dinner plate. Look, that's the size that your yeah. flowers can be. And so, you know, so easy to say, plant them somewhere sunny, yeah. uh, sunny and bright, decent soil, well drained. They'll start flowering for you probably late June into July, and then all the way through July, August, September, right into October. In fact, the way things are going these days, we don't normally start getting the first frost now till November. And if there isn't yeah. any frost, they'll keep they'll, going, don't they? they'll keep yeah. going. They'll keep going right up until November. Uh, right, I, I think they're going to be really popular. Nine nine seven for five, double up, and you get two for fourteen pounds and ninety eight pence. Six thirty three one nine. Now we're going to move on to our, our lavender next, and you can either go for one for three nine ten or eight nine nine for three of these. And I can honestly say, I, I 
Adam, Adam, some of you don't know, but Adam actually helped me with my garden, didn't you, in terms of the initial design. Yep. And I said, I want a formal board at the front. And I planted the whole front in lavender with buxus. Adam, it looks amazing. And it really got established within a couple of years, the lavender, um, absolutely huge. We're talking big clumps about this sort of size. Yeah, and the great thing about lavender hiccup, they call it English lavender. I mean, technically, you know, it doesn't originate from England, but they call it English lavender because it's a very popular lavender. And what I really like about Hidcoat, Sean, is it's one of these lavenders that when it flowers, it remains upright. It's quite yes. compact. Yes, yes, it does. Some lavenders, when they flower, especially when they get heavy rain and stuff, the flowers all tend to flop yeah. over. And they all flop That's... over the lawn and over the edge of the drive. Oh, look at that. I know. Wow. Is that, that oh. was, I mean, you know, that's only in a couple of years. That is knockout. I yeah. know, it did really I mean, well. And, and it was, I mean, I remember in summertime, it was just a buzz of life with the, the oh, bees, the butterflies. Yeah, and you know, great thing about lavender as well is that if you've got soil that's quite poor, if you've got, um, like, like where I live in Norfolk, if you've got sandy soil, if you've got stony soil, if you've got gravelly soil, uh, chalky soil, kind of quite poor soil, lavender loves it. Lavender yeah, yeah. doesn't need rich, deep, uh, you know, fertile soil. It'll actually, they'll actually prefer yeah. poorer soils uh, and Souls where other things won't grow. So, providing there's full sun, you can yeah. grow lavender so so Just easily. See, I wish some of my friends would uh, appreciate a poor lifestyle, but they, <laughs> but yeah, this likes a poor life, poor conditions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a real easy plant to grow when it's finished flowering. Just actually, and the dead, the flower heads of you know. In fact, what I tend to do is you you know when lavender's completely finished flowering because once the bees finally stop visiting, yeah, you know that's it. So and, true. And then take the dead flower heads off, but go down about half inch or so into the foliage just below as well, and then you'll get a little bit of regrowth of the foliage and then next spring, next summer, that will be the growing point where all the flowers will come back again. And look at this. Yeah, I, I mean, mean they, they look great in a formal garden, but equally just um, in, in a country cottage garden, just at the side of pathways. So you really get to appreciate that gorgeous fragrance. The only tip for lavender is just open and sunny. Don't make them compete with other plants. Don't put them in a border with other plants close around them. They, they don't like You're that. You're so right. They love yeah. to stand alone. So, you know, open, sunny, that's where they really thrive. Make them compete with somewhere else, they'll show off. But standing out on their own, in the sun, yeah. absolutely love it. And they, they will grow where other things might struggle. You, you know, sometimes you might have a really dry garden that you're always watering and it's, you know, you're on a water meter and it's expensive and you, you're trying to keep other plants alive. Again, lavender is so, so drought tolerant, incredibly drought tolerant. Another good they're way an of... Um, they're an absolute yeah, winner. They are. They? And these are stunding plants. They're they, re sure? really good quality. You can actually see, if you just take that out, look, fantastic Yay. roots. And you get three of those today for £8.99. Something that I often forget to say as well, Lavender looks really good in the winter because it's evergreen. It does, yeah. And it yep. still smells good in the winter, it? smells good. It? And I mean, yeah. look, this has been sort of um, pinched out in the middle, so you've not just got one little, you know, sort of scrawny stem. This is this is already multi-branched. Yeah. There's probably a dozen stems on there, and that straight away this year is going to give you at least a dozen and 15 flowers straight yeah. away. really fast growing as Oh, well. yeah, fast growing. And it actually makes sense to buy lavenders at a smaller size as well, because if you buy really big lavenders, you know, they won't last as many years as the smaller lavenders because they do grow really really fast so buy them small this year they'll probably get probably double that size next year double again next year double yeah. again so and that's a great way of doing it uh, well uh, they are 510 319 only three pounds and nine ten but if you triple up on those you get three for eight pounds and nine nine pence now i know we are getting lots of brand new viewers to the show so do come and say hello and uh, say hello to Adam as well. He's not been on the show for, for quite a while and he's got quite a lot planned here in the next year. But Elena, George, Neil and Elaine uh, all said hello. Re Rebecca, that's Rebecca Edwards, that's our Beck, she's watching a bit. She's so, lovely. She sent me a lovely little message uh, yesterday evening as well. Fabulous. Just say good luck tomorrow and uh, you hope all goes well. So It's, a, really, it's, it's a birthday tomorrow really as well, kind of her. isn't it, Bex? So uh, Bex isn't here today because she's at QVC later today at five o'clock on QVC style. So do make sure that you, uh, you tune into that later today. She's just getting ready for QVC. Yes. As you do. As you do, yeah. There's a lot, lot to, lots so of plants. That's, that's dub, double helping to plants for people today. Then, Absolutely. Which is nice. Yeah. yeah. And that's so uplifting this time of year, and it's to see all these fabulous colours and, and know that we're not going towards winter now. We're coming out of winter. Yeah. We're going towards the longer days. We're going towards the warmth, the light, yes. the flowers. We, we hate the winter. And, and I said to Adam, how, how have you been? I've been it down. And Adam's like, well, not now, because actually... We, we, we're heading in the right direction, yeah. and we yeah. so are. Winter's been given its marching orders now. Yes. We've broken the back of it. Next week, we're into February, and February's a short month. 
Then it's March and we're, we, we're done winter spring. Right, I'm going to move on to another lovely dahlia. And this one is called Blackberry Ripple. Um, and I mean, Adam, when you first came into the studio today and you saw that image, I remember you saying, oh my word, what a fabulous container. It's amazing, this one, isn't it? It's just knockout, Sean. Isn't it it I mean, is. You know, it's just a stunning, stunning looking daily there with the, sort of the red and that white mottling on there. It's just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, this is going to make such an impact in a garden and starts flowering, as I say, probably June time, will go all the way through to the frost. In fact, uh, uh, where we are today, there, there's a place a little bit further up the A17 that I've been past a couple of times when I've gone to Cumbria a few times this year. Um, and they have huge dahlia borders all the way down the Aww. side of this place, either, either side of the road. Um, and they've been flowering right the way up. In fact, last autumn they flowered right the way up to the first frosts. Really? They just kept going. So that's a good thing about dahlias. They, they yeah. bring you colour really and late into the season when other things have gone over. And each single plant gives a big show. In fact, I was working with our head gardener, Pete, yesterday, and he, he said some plants are fillers and some are thrillers. Have you heard that expression? I have, yeah. That's yeah. a thriller, isn't they it? They are a thriller, yeah. yeah. D dahlias aren't modest. You no, know, dahlias really will. They're the prima donnas. They really, yeah, you know, they're the red carpet kind of plants. They are. They're, they're, they're kind of your, your, yeah, your Hollywood kind of uh, yeah. type of plants. If there's you nothing like. beige and insignificant no. and shy no. about a dahlia. Give but them space. this particular one. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? It is, and it will be the kind of dahlia when it flowers later in the year. Friends, family, people who see it will say to you. What is that variety? Where did you get that? That is knockout. That is stunning. Do you know it really what? is. Adam, I'm really excited about, about this year now. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just pl I'm, I'm planning my garden. I'm definitely going to buy those. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. mean, I've got into... Dahlia's kind of fell out of fashion for a little while, but they've really come back yeah. again in the last kind of four or five years. And, and I think the reason they might have fallen out of fashion is because, sadly, we went through this period, and it still happens a little bit now, where certain... I don't know, certain publications, certain people were, were trying to kind of fashionize gardening too much and say, you know, we've got to plant this color with that color and all and you know, and people are realizing now, you know what? My garden is the last space in the world I can be and do what I want to do without anyone else interfering. And I think people have realized that now and thought, you know what? I can do whatever I like I'm in my garden. I so agree. I can with have you. a riot of colour. And because dahlias are so out there, because they yeah. are so bright, people have just thought, I'm going to grow them because they're joyful, yeah. they're happy plants. And I'm glad you've said, I mean, Adam is an award winning garden designer, but I'm so glad that you, you fundamentally, you're like, have your garden as you want it. Exactly. And I'm, I'm the same. Your yeah. garden is your special place. There's no right or wrong. No. We all like different things. It's what makes you happy. We go to work and we're told we've got to wear a certain uniform. You know, we, we go to different places. We tell we've got to behave like this, behave like that. You know, in so many areas of life, we're constricted. You step into your garden, all the, all, you know, all, just throw it all away, get yeah. rid of that, and just do what you want to do. It's Love, your space to experiment. Lovely and have words fun. there, Adam, lovely sentiments. Uh, so, if your heart's going, oh, I really like that, then get it in your basket. How could you right not now. like that? I, I mean, I could not imagine. It's beautiful, it's really stunning. Super healthy plant as well, really glossy foliage on these. Um, yeah. A really so vigorous again, plant. Sunny position. Yeah, sunny, well drained. Um, if, if you know, put some compost into the soil before you plant, or well rotted manure or something like that. We, we've got an amazing compost that will give these a great starting and, life. And we should say all of our plants have got full instructions. So this goes to 34 inches, between 22 and 34. Sounds about right to yep, me. Yep. About so three foot, that is, re isn't it? Reasonably compact. Um, so planting depth, one to two inches. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you could go a little bit deeper. I was going to yeah, a little bit deeper. Yeah, I'll go a little yeah. bit deeper than that. Probably about three or four inches, to be honest. But, you know, they're not, they're not going to worry too much, but... i tell you what, these are really healthy tubers. Yeah, you can tell, because... I mean, they're big. And yeah. if you pick them up and they're soft and squidgy and stuff like that, you know they're not good. But no, these, these are really... Feeling. Yeah, that's it. I mean, they're really, really good. Yeah. And, um, and I, I shouldn't say this, really, but... Um, if when you go to plant them, you get the odd tuber that snaps off as well, you could plant that separately. Yeah. You might end up with an extra plant. Yeah, I've done so, that before. Yeah. You don't always do, but sometimes you do. Yeah, sometimes you do. But these are really, really good quality tubers. And years ago, well, centuries ago, people used to eat daily tubers. In fact, people used to eat daily tubers before they ate potatoes. Um, but they fell out of fashion because um, they gave you very bad wind. Oh. So, yeah. yeah. So then people started eating potatoes instead of daily tubers. 
So, yeah, don't eat them, plant them. You there can you still eat them now if you want to. People do. I didn't yeah, know. You know parts of the world, people still do eat daily achievers. No, they're far too good to eat. But, um, yeah, no. Yeah. You, you, want to, you want to plant these you in really your garden. You really do. Don't, yeah, um, don't let, eat them. Let us know if you're going for those. I mean, both, if, if we had to pick a favourite, that is definitely in our top three today, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I mean, looking around what we've got here in the studio, we're going to go to some gorgeous irises later on yeah, that really caught my nice. eye. But I, I think probably the daily is, yeah, is in my top three as well, if not yeah. the top of my top three. There you go. Heading towards number one. Uh, right, we've got an amazing deal on Hostas next. So these are bare roots. It's buy five, get another five absolutely free. So we're at a pound each. You do need to use a code. I think we're going to be really busy today. YGTV0424. And they got it right that time, didn't I? But yeah, YGTV0424. Don't push your luck. <laughs> That's a bit I normally get right, Adam. So, um, these are, say, bare roots, so you're going to get 10, it works at a pound each. And hostas, I, I mean, I adore hostas, don't you? I adore hostas. Oh. I, I'm going to say two words to start with, and then I'm going to come back to the second word later on, because I, I know a lot of people might be thinking. I'm going to say hostas, stroach, and I'm going to leave it there for a moment. Yes, we've got that on the show. And then I'll come back. But hostas are absolutely brilliant, because hostas flower, as you can see there, but also, Sean, you get the most incredible colours just from mm. the foliage. Some have got bright, bright lime green foliage. Some have got yellow yeah. foliage. Some have got silver, gold foliage. Some have got like deep, deep kind of bluey green foliage. Some have got variegated Amazing. foliage like this one. And my garden, my garden is, is just angled in such a way that one end of it is dead north facing, one end of it is dead south facing. Wow. So, which is good, because on the south facing side, I can have all those Mediterranean kind of plants like lavender. But conversely, on the north facing side, I can grow things like hostas, because hostas yeah. are fantastic Best both, for then. shade. Yeah, they will grow in full sun, but ideally they prefer shade. They like quite moist soil, although they will do quite well in dryish soil. But they're dramatic plants, oh, they really are. dramatic. Uh, right. 10 of them, they are bare roots. So, Adam, in terms of flying, I'm presuming as a, as a bare root hosta, we're going to get really good foliage in the first year, but we might not get flowers in the first year. I mean, they, you might get the odd one, but they do need to get a little bit established yeah. before they flower. I mean, some people actually um, cut the flowers yeah, off. Yeah, I mean, I, I must admit, the flowers... I they, like the flowers. They're nice, but I, I grow them for the foliage. Yeah, I grow them for the foliage. I mean, the flowers are a bonus, in my opinion. And sometimes I just cut the flowers off and take them indoors and use them as a cut flower indoors and just enjoy the foliage. But, but on the picture we've got there, you can already see the wonderful contrasting colours there. And imagine a north-facing border or a shady border mm. where it's a bit darker anyway. These colours lift that border. They really do. And if you've, ever, if you've got that difficult area that is shady, and you've tried lots of plants and they just haven't liked it there and they've not done well, get some hostas in there. I've got my hostas underneath the eucalyptus tree. A little bit challenging because the, the ground underneath there is just stripped of nutrients and water a lot of the time, but they do do really well. Yeah, they, they do. do. They're not that fussy. But I know a lot of you, straight away, you think of hostas, you think all oh, slugs and snails. Yes. Because, you know, that can be a problem with hostas, but, and I swear this to you, I have tried Strolsch with my hostas as my other half in the front garden. And I have found Strolsch has been absolutely remarkable at keeping slugs and snails off my hostas. I, I, I know sometimes you think, oh yeah, you, you, know, you guys say these sorts of things, blah, blah, blah. But honestly, on my, you know, on my life, I tried it. Yeah, I know you. It, it works brilliantly well. And I'll be even more honest with you because when I first tried it, I've, I've got a raised bed at this, at this edge of my garden with hostas, and then I've got palms and things in between and little aces at the back. And I put the strolls down first. And on the first night or couple of nights, there was still a little bit of slug activity. Third or fourth night, really, really slowed down. After about a week, really? nothing at all. Yeah, the, the, the slugs and snails just hated yeah. it. They just went somewhere else. So, and it looks nice as well, and it keeps the moisture in. It, it, it sort of well, rots down eventually and adds organic material to the soil. Keeps the weeds down, keeps the moisture in, keeps the frost out of the ground. It's a brilliant product in its own right. Well, we are doing today a twin pack for 36.97. The MRP is nearly 50 pounds. And actually, don't forget, because you, you, you can get free delivery when you spend £40, if you're buying Strolsch, whatever else you add to your basket will then get free postage. It will get you over that £40. 
So uh, we were talking about it being brilliant for slugs and snails. I said brilliant. It just gets them to move on. It doesn't kill them. No, which is good because you, you don't want to, you don't want to kill them either. Because at the end of the day, they are fantastic food for birds. You know, um, the, the, the starlings and uh, you know quite a lot of birds love uh, eating slugs and snails, uh, as, as do frogs as well. And um, of course. So you don't want to you don't want to kill that food source, but it <coughs> just deters them and sends them elsewhere. And but, but also, Adam, it's a great weed uh, suppressant, obviously. Great for keeping the soil moist in the summertime. So have you used straws on things like raspberries and... Yeah, you could... I mean, and another thing, now, it doesn't say this on the bag, but this is just something I tried myself, anecdotally. Uh, in our front garden, we had a problem, and we found this out accidentally. We had a problem, a problem with cats using our front garden. And we put lots of straws down to keep the slugs and snails away, but we also found it massively reduced the amount of cat doo-doo in the front garden really? as well. Really? Yeah, now I'm not, they, you know, this product isn't sold to say, but just that's from my own little, experience, yeah. that's what I found. And I've got a feeling the cats just didn't like, when they were digging, they didn't like it all getting between their claws and paws yeah. and things like that. So it did that's, mass- I, I can imagine that, yeah. And, or if it was a smell, it does, it's got a fragrance where they didn't like that as well, but so it, it that may be a, a, a little added benefit. That's Josh. Now Elena has emailed. I know she. I know yesterday she sent us pictures of her houseplants that look fabulous. Today she's done it. She's going to show us a before and after. So this was Elena's garden when she moved in. How long ago was this? Do we know? Wow, that looked like a challenge. Right. Okay. Nice and open to the sky there. That one. That good. Good position. So, what would you have done with that garden? I Adam? think I'd. Have, I think I'd have cried when I turned up. To be honest. Oh come on. But, you... um, yeah, I mean, I'd have perhaps broken it up into different sections, kind of so it didn't look so long and narrow, uh, so the eye doesn't go straight to the end of the garden, break it up with different features, um, get some climbers up on the fences, lots of colour, some uh, little trees here and there, some shrubs. Well, should we see what Elena did? A little did? windy path perhaps going through oh. the middle. Well, Elena's... Hey, hey, look at that. Oh, my word. That is... Now, Elena um, has just said that Strulch has completely changed her garden and she can grow pretty much anything she wants. And those lupins, because slugs do love lupins, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. And green Elena, flies as well. that looks amazing. That is a stunning picture. And I mean, she's actually, although she hasn't, say, put the path down the middle, she has broken it up. So now yeah, it's. Yeah, with, with those borders at the yeah, side, and even the, the little um, greenhouse at the oh, end there, that, that's kind of broken it up a bit as well. Um, but, Elena, you've made our day, because that, that, that is a joyous image to look at it now, is as well it? I mean because you've got the, wow. the, you've got that summer blue sky you've got those little fluffy clouds so um that that's really uplifting oh. isn't it and 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 the thing is I would have been in that garden now that isn't going away from us now as as it was in the autumn that's that's coming towards us this is what's coming now Sean so you know we, we, British winters can be torturous can't they because yeah. they're so dull and they're so gray and they're so damp but when you see an image like that Elena thank you so amazing. much because that what that's done it's like it, it's made me think, you know what? Spring and summer, not that long away. It's coming, and your garden's gonna look like that again, if not even better. But yeah, now we've got the email. If you wanna send in any pictures, you know, this is all about building a garden community, and we want you to be part of our part of our gang, so to speak. So YGTV at yougarden.com. And say, my name is Sean Ryan. I'm known as Sean Ryan Present and Plant Man, because I've presented for years, and I've always loved plants. Adam Wilcott, there's my details. If you want to uh, follow me on Facebook and Instagram, if you want to say, see what I'm up to, share some of your comments. And then Adam... I'm on Instagram. You're on Instagram, yeah. aren't you? Uh, Adam.Woolcott, which is W-O-O-L-C-O-T-T, Adam.Woolcott on Instagram. Yeah. And honestly, Adam's had the most amazing career and uh, is a wealth, a fountain of knowledge. I've only and started Instagram recently, so uh, I'm still kind of uh, navigating my way through, but I'm enjoying it. should have seen the it. pair of us earlier with, with our phones, like... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Neither of us had a pair of glasses between us yeah. like this. When um, I see my young nephews on their phones, oh, they're, they're, like, they're, they're, I know. Like, yeah, yeah. they're not even looking, they're just kind of, yeah. like, oh dear. I said, what you doing? I've, just, I've just sent 20 posts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, but we'd love you to, to follow us and of course follow you, Garden, as well. But we've got amazing deals today because at the end of the day, it's all about you getting some fantastic offers, and that is a buy one, get one free. Do you need to use the code YGTV0424? Do tell your friends and family about this show as well if you've got any friends that are into gardening because you don't if you can watch live we're live every wednesday 10 to 1 every tuesday no we're not 
We're live every Wednesday, 10 to 1, every Thursday, 10 to 1, and Sunday, 10 to 2. But you can always stream the shows later on YouTube and on our website as well. A quick, I mean, just final quick tip about the hostas as well. You could, you could plant them straight into the garden, but what I'd be tempted to do is uh, put them in pots I initially. Would. Yeah, yeah, just so put them in a pot. You don't even need to go and buy expensive pots. Any pots will do, really, with some decent compost. Grow them on first, get them established, and then plant them out into the yeah. garden. That's what yeah. I'd do personally. Yeah. I would as well. I really would. But amazing value. Loads of you've been going for those. Five eighty zero four nine is your item number. Uh, right, we have got an absolute stunner right now. I'm gonna, we, I'm gonna do my uh, deep, sexy voice for this one, Adam. You've never heard it before. This is burning love. Oh, I know. Uh, uh, wow. There you go. You've missed your vocation. <laughs> do you reckon? Yeah. Um, I'm not now, saying what you could do, but I'm just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a daytime program. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, that's, a, that's a little name for this burning love. Now, I've, we've been calling this Lukothi, but you call it... I, you I, I, it I like called it Lukothoe. Lukothoe. I think that's nicer. But, but it's like lots of plant names. Some people say um, Catoniasters. Some people say Cottonistas. So it's... Yeah. You know, but I quite like the way you pronounce it. Lukothoe. Lukothoe. That's how I've I like that. Lukothoe. Yeah, yeah, it might start pronouncing it your way, Adam. Um, but what a gorgeous looking plant this is, yeah. isn't it? Evergreen plant. They do flower as well. They have these lovely little kind of white flower spikes on eventually. But evergreen, you've got the new foliage. It's that wonderful kind of bronzy kind of red colour there. Um, a, a great plant again as well for a more shady position. And they would look amazing with the hostas. Great contrast with the hostas there. So if you want your kind of mix and match, the, 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 those two would be kind of a marriage made in heaven, really. If you've got a garden that's already got acid soil, so for instance, you've got rhododendrons and azaleas doing really well in your garden, you can put that straight in the soil. If you haven't got acid soil, you're best growing this in a pot using ericaceous compost, which we've got available. We have. And it's really worth doing that as well, because this is such a stunning it and unusual... Is. An attractive I know, shrub. I always think, Adam, sometimes if, if, if something's acid loving, you think, oh, can I be bothered? Like, let's be honest, because unless you've got acid soil, but you think, oh, do I need to buy a bag of ericaceous compost, have it in a separate pot? But it is definitely worth it. It is worth it. I, I, I mean, mean, I think the leaves, the foliage is fantastic. Well, if you think, Sean, we're, we're what, in the third week of January? Yeah, look at it. And even this time of year, I mean, that's been out in the nursery as well. It's not been, you know, no, no, it's kept straight under glass. From outside. You know, straight from outside. It, and we've had all the frost and stuff recently. It doesn't even look bad at all, does it? No, at this time of year that still looks absolutely gorgeous. So if you've got that in the pot, you can have it on your patio, you can have it near the house, so you've got that interest and that colour. And imagine if around that you had little three or four pots of daffodils or crocuses yeah. or things like that. Now, you I, could... I was going to ask you, Adam, if I was uh, to grow these in pots, but I wanted to put some summer bedding plants around them. What, what would do okay now because compost would begonias be all right? In most things, yeah. Yeah, they, they'd all, yeah I mean... It, all, all ericaceous compost does is just make certain nutrients more available than a non-ericaceous compost. So it, so it would be okay with so most bedding? Yeah, pretty much be all bedding plants would do just yeah. as well in ericaceous as non-ericaceous. Because so I was thinking of just having that in pots, but so I, I like the idea of some white white begonias around it in summer, white busy lizzies, that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, all those little bedding begonias, the semifloron uh, begonias. Yeah, they'd be nice, great. The little yeah. pink and white ones yeah. would look lovely around that. Or you could uh, go for a contrast with some really blue lobelia or white lobelia trailing down the side. That could yeah. look, look quite good. Yeah, lots of options um, there. Now, they are currently at their lowest price this year. They're down to eight nine to nine. We can't keep at that price for much longer. So if you do want to take advantage of that £6 saving, then give us a call. It's been really popular, this one, I think. It's an easy shrub. I mean, it doesn't need pruning. It doesn't need deadheading. All you've got to do is put it in the ground if you've got acid soil. Put it in a pot with ericaceous compost, if not. Keep it somewhere shady, shade or dappled shade. It, you know, in really full sun, it can get a little bit scorched, but dappled shade to shade is good for it as well. Or where it gets sun in the morning and then sort of later in the day. But it's it's such a rewarding plant. And say, eventually, they do flower as well. These sort of unusual white flowers on them. But really, you're going to love this shrub for yeah. the actual Do you know foliage. what, Adam? It's one that... I I've not seen that often in the garden centres and things. They're, they've only really 
sort of come about in the last 15, 20 years or so. I mean, there, there weren't a plant that was... No, you, I was going to say, I never saw that as a child. No, no, you, you wouldn't have seen that back then. There's a lot of uh, different shrubs that have come in in sort of recent years. And I think probably, although this is very hardy, uh, you know, a lot of things have come in recent years because, you know, the winters yeah. and stuff have got warmer, so we're, we're trying more different things. Cool. Well, I hope, I, if you are a new viewer, I'd love you to try that for the first time. Brilliant price, eight ninety nine, and lifetime guarantee with that. Is that correct? Yeah, we still with all of our winter hardy shrubs. So anything that we say is fully winter hardy, we do offer a lifetime guarantee. So Brilliant. if the plant doesn't thrive and survive, I don't like to use the word dies, but no, then do that. if it does, uh, then we uh, we will replace it free of charge. All you do is pay the postage and packaging. That's on all the fully hardy winter plants that we bring. So don't forget the special off code YGTV0424. That will unlock all of the promotions. You'll also get your free bulbs worth nearly 20 pounds and they're spring summer flying bulbs that are absolutely fine to plant right now. They'll give you months and months of color. Now, Adam, we had, a, we, had a we had a good catch up this morning because we've not seen each other for ages. And, uh, and we were talking about mimosa. And you've actually got a pretty much a tree, a mimosa tree now. I have, yeah. Yeah, um, because it grow, they grow they so grow, quick. They can, grow, they can grow several feet a year. Yeah, they, they grow about five or six feet in a year. They are crazy, crazy wow. quick growing plants. Um, um, but they are, oh, I say only, they're hardy to about minus five, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be really honest with you. Yeah, listen uh, to this. This is the I truth. I put one in my garden about four or five years ago, and it got to about 14, 15 foot tall. And then last wow. year, we had minus 11 and minus 12, and I thought I'd lost it. So I cut it down to a post about this high, and it's re regrown. God. And, and in one year, since the spring, the new branches have grown about six foot in one, in one season. Wow. So... It's the sort of shrub that perhaps once in 10 years, once in 20 years, you may lose it or you may get it severely damaged. But to be honest, for, for, for what the investment you're making at the beginning is so it. low, the joy that it's going to bring yeah. you is so high, it's really, yeah. really worth uh, going for this. Because, I 100% want one in my new garden Yeah, and, I, and yeah. I've seen some that have been established for, for years and years and years. I was saying to Sean, where, where I used to live in Bishop Stortford, sometimes we used to get the uh, train into Liverpool Street. Um, and about four or five stops before we got to Liverpool Street, I always remember when we went up in uh, January time, we was going along and I just saw this huge tree in January just completely smothered in yellow flowers. And it, and it was just mind blowing yeah, because yeah. it's like, how in the midst of winter, when just, they, it's this flower and it sucks off, but it does. And and I saw one years ago as well, a Buckhurst Hill um, flower and it sucks well, off as well. My um, One of my neighbours has got, I mean, they've only lived in the house four or five years, but the garden was very established. And yeah, there's a massive mimosa tree at the bottom of it. And I do remember last winter, I think there's flowered about February yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, late February. But it was unbelievable. Uh, so this one is already covered with buds. You're going to get hundreds of buds. And the flowers, I describe them as like little yellow pom-poms. They are little yellow pom-poms. And they're great for sort of early uh, pollinators as well. So you're helping them out. And they do have a bit of a kind of a soft fragrance. Almost yeah, like a baby nice, or kind of soft yeah. fragrance to them as well. Um, and the foliage. I mean, look at those I leaves. I mean, they're, they're like, fern, um, like fern leaves, aren't they? It's they're like, a, yeah, furry feathery. Incredible feathery leaves. And they are evergreen, obviously. Yeah, they're evergreen. And also, um, these don't. But they always remind me of those little mosas, you, you know, the sensitive plant that, that's got leaves like this that you touch and all the leaves fold up. There's a mimosa. Oh, there's, yes. There's another mimosa in the family that has yes, little, know, yes, little, And when you touch the leaves, they all fold up. Yeah, I know. This one doesn't do that, but you almost expect it to do that. Yeah. But, and it so, almost looks a bit prehistoric, Sean, as it well. It does. It? The leaves, it kind of got that look to it. Uh, so. Yes, you can grow in this country. It's hardy to minus five. Just bear that in mind. Obviously, a lot depends on where you live in the country, north or south. But obviously, you can grow them in pots, and that will give them... You can prune uh, them as well. You can keep them clipped to size. They, yeah. They react really well to being pruned. They're not fussed about being pruned. So I think it is worth giving one of these a go, don't you? Yeah, because if you're in a really cold area, I mean, we've got a fantastic pot here, for example. Yeah, these Tuscany are the Tuscany. Now, these aren't on offer today. And you get two for eleven ninety nine, Adam. Yeah, and you know, it's pot, amazing. Pots like. are daft expensive at the moment as well. In fact, yeah. I'll quickly show you this. It's two, buy one get one yeah. free. So they're normally twelve nine ten each, but you get a buy one get one free today. I mean, they're a really good size. Forty six centimeters diameter. 
They're 30 litres, so that's big enough to grow. You could grow fruit trees in here, potatoes. Roses. Roses. Yeah, yeah your mimosa would do very nice in here, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, because you're really cold. I guess these are frost resistant, UV yeah. resistant. Yeah, uh, They're not going to crack. They're not going to split like uh, terracotta pots. They're lightweight as well. So if you've got a rooftop garden or, you know, if you're not as mobile as you used to be and you want to move them about, really, really easy. But if you live in a super, super cold area and you want to grow mimosa, well, grow the mimosa in one of these pots. And then if the weather does turn really bad, because you haven't got a super heavy pot either, you can just take it into a garage somewhere or somewhere frost for it doesn't have to be warm somewhere just a little bit above freezing yeah. until the worst of the weather's gone and then just wheel it back out again but to have that color and that joy and that interest in late january february time i think it's, it's, it's worth the effort yeah. and um, adam uh, not this adam but uh, adam is one of our regulars uh, clay adam we call him is the one with clay soil but um Adam said he's got one of these in clay soil and it's done great. Well, it's surprising because they actually, I, I mean, they love a sunny spot, but they actually want well drained, don't well, they? Well, it's funny because uh, the one I mentioned in Buckhurst Hill, um, which I, it was a lady I used to look after years ago, a gorgeous lady called Mrs. Ross, she's gone now, but she was such a sweet soul. So, and uh, her soul was really hideous, heavy clay in her garden. I, I remember it. And this mimosa was about three or four gardens up, and that, that did fantastically really? well there. Yeah. You and, never know, do you? My garden's really sandy soil in North and it does well there so they're really not fussy plants uh, but it is, it's just a really weird experience seeing in the depths of a British winter a tree yeah. that looks like it's been lifted from Grand Canary so, and dropped in your garden do you know what at home if you just think oh I quite like the sound of that go for it you've got to sometimes try new things in gardening well that that, that is a part of the joy of gardening it as is. well is, is, is putting a little bit of effort and a little bit of TLC into something and then getting that reward and I think that's why people do enjoy gardening because sometimes things are dead easy sometimes it needs a little bit of a challenge but when you do that and you get the result oh. it, it just lifts your mood it just makes you feel happy that you've achieved something like growing a mimosa yeah well let us know if you're going for it today and don't forget if you want to say hello to adam uh, or myself sean you can do it on the group chat on facebook and uh, on youtube and you can now email us as well which is ygtv at ugarden.com as well uh, Jennifer's with us today, brand new, I believe. That's nice. Hi, Jennifer. Yeah, and, Thanks for joining us. And Philip's back. Nice to see you again, Philip. And he's very happy to see you. Oh, that's nice. We're that's happy nice. to see as well. It's nice to sort of, you know, hear everybody's joining in as well because another thing I mentioned before when I was on as well is gardening is so fantastic for mental health as well. Yeah, you know, yeah, of course So it many is. mental health issues these days. And, and, and this time of year, I know a lot of people suffer from SAD like myself and Sean do. But, you know, when we all get together like we are now and we're at this time of year and we're talking about plants and colour and the, the new season's coming, you, you can't help but no. feel your mood lifting and, and that you, yeah. you just feel that it's darkness so nice. falling away, you know, because yeah. you know we're going towards the good times I think, again. I think just presenting the show has really helped me this January because I normally hate January, but I've been inspired because I'm planning spring and summer. Yeah, yeah. And it is lovely to have Adam here. Say, um, Bex and I, we, we work so well together um, and we love being together on the shows, but it's always nice when we have extra new guests because we all bring something different. We've all got different levels of knowledge. And I mean, Adam, you're you've got very good rounded knowledge, but there's certain areas that you really specialist in. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I love palms. I'm really good at, well, I, I like tropical plants. I, my, my garden, I go for a kind of jungly. Yeah, I know, yeah. And I, like, I like to try things that are difficult to grow, that are, that, are, that are hard to grow sometimes. But yeah, that's not everybody's cup of tea. But you know, the good thing about you garden is, well, we bring you things that are fantastic, but also are not super challenging as well. Yeah. So, because there's nothing worse, is there, than, than, than buying a plant and trying to grow it and it fails. That just disappoints yeah. people from the start. So we always bring you things that we know and you're going to have success with. And we should say we've got great advice and information on our website as well. Right, we're going to move on just to... Right, do you know you don't know the process, do you, Adam? I don't, no. You don't? No, no. Bay and trees, and I, I don't know why, but bay trees are always... Silly expensive. I, mean, so, I would imagine 25, 30 pounds. Yeah, he obviously like doesn't know the price of this. Plus, plus P and P. That's the, that's kind of my job. There's the price, Adam. Nine ninety nine. <laughs> he really didn't know the okay. price of this. That's yeah. I'm not normally speechless, but um, that is. I know. <laughs> I was just saying we we, we we brought it's a new price in this, and we we brought it yesterday. I'm gonna. And um, I was the same, Adam. Was like, how can we do that for under ten? And we went online, and the the variation prices was ridiculous. 
But we did find a similar size plant for maybe £100 on oh, one yes. website. To be fair, a big online, a big retailer has got big stores, DIY sort of stores everywhere. They had a special offer on these and they did have one for about £18, which was amazing. But we are at nine nine ten. Now that smell of the bay leaf. Yeah, I'm not with you now, Sean. I'm, no, I'm, I can I'm, tell. I'm in Tuscany now. I'm in uh, I'm in Spain now. I'm, I'm kind of. That's so good. Uh, that so, I'm just thinking, yeah, again, spag bog, like really gorgeous meals, pizzas, kind of. Ah, oh, kind oh, of, so yeah, good, just lovely, it? wonderful meals with that gorgeous fragrance. Yeah, I love bay. Such a good flavour, isn't it? I mean, you can just put it in so many different. Yeah. And you can use it. I mean, these, and, are the, um, these are the bay leaves you use in cooking. And, so and I was going to say, my gardening buddy Bex. I don't know if she's still watching, but Bex is a really good cook. Actually, I've discovered that she's a good baker. But she was saying, yeah, you know, just uh, add a couple of bay leaves when you're making a casserole and uh, you know a, a, a curry. It just makes such a difference. And the silly thing is, Adam, because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bad at cooking, but I'm not great. I've actually bought bay leaves before. Yes. I've bought, you know, I've done a Thai curry and I've, I've gone down the list and bought every ingredient and spent about two hundred pounds in the end. But I've actually bought bay leaves in a little pack. I mean, how ridiculous is that? Yeah, and they've all semi dried out. Yes. and a lot of the essential oils have kind of you know gone and disappeared. And I mean, what could be better than literally walking outside in your garden, picking off one of these leaves fresh from your bay tree, yeah. and dropping that straight into your curry, your casserole, or if you're making one of those little um, bouquet garni, uh, is it bouquet garni? Yeah, those little bouquet yeah, garni yeah. things that you drop in. Absolutely fantastic. So you and can use this in cooking. It's an evergreen shrub as well, so it looks fantastic. So I was, say, I was going to say, a bay tree never really changes day to day, month to month, year to year, does it? Always look green, yeah. always look elegant. And not only does the foliage look good, look at these lovely red stems as well. You've got these wonderful, lovely, colourful so, red stems. And they flower, they have wonderful white flowers, like spring, early summer. We sometimes forget about that, don't we? Yeah, they, and absolutely fabulous for topiary as well. You can clip these, well, you can let it grow into a tree, let it grow wild, or you can clip it and keep it into a shape, whatever you want to do with it. A real do people versatile ever, plant. Do people ever use bay trees as hedging? Yeah, makes a fantastic hedge. Yeah, yeah hedge, topiary. I've never done that. I've just never done that myself, but I'm just thinking, you know, if you want to do plant a small hedge, well, it doesn't have to be small, but a hedge in Bay, that would look fabulous. Wouldn't it? I'd smell fabulous. I used to uh, look, in, look after a house in Hatfield Heath uh, for the original owners. Um, the house was built in the 17th century, but they planted uh, two bay trees at the front of the house in the 1930s. And they're still there. Yeah. And they're sort of clipped against the house in a half sort of dome shape. God. Uh, right, so that is just the absolute steal of a deal today, $9.99. Even the postage, better mind how big it is, it's in a 20 centimetre pot, it's only $4.99. But they look, I think, just, in fact, Adam, I've got another pot. That, I mean, what do you think of these? I really like these. These are called the April pots. That would look good in there, sure. I mean, it? how, that to me looks really high end, doesn't it? And we are doing a twin pack of these. They're brand new, they've been selected by a head gardener, actually. Uh, two of them for twenty four ninety eight with postage included. That looks really nice instantly. And I tell you what, what we've really set that off as well. Imagine that in a pot with three of those lavender hid coat around it Ooh. as well. You've got that perfect Mediterranean plant yeah. there, isn't it? That would just look absolutely stunning, wouldn't it? That'd look great. Silver foliage of the lavender, purple flowers of the lavender, this deep, deep glossy green of the bay in between. And also they're both kind um, of herby sort of plants, aren't they, as well? So I'm thinking that the, the, the pot individually works out about 12.50, that's a tenner, about £22.50 for that. If you saw that pot, I mean obviously you need a little bit of compost, but if you saw that pot open in the garden centre, I think you could be easy talking 70, 80 pounds, yeah, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could. Yeah, you could. Pot it up. Yeah. There used As to be said, a nursery um, near where we used to work previously that would definitely have charged that amount for, yeah. for, for a plant like that in a pot. So um, amazing value. I love these planters. They've been specially selected by a head gardener. And he got to see, on his travels last year, he saw thousands of planters, but he has picked the very best. And I think they're stunning. Good thing, I mean, I used to be a real snob about plastic planters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and I would never have plastic planters in my garden. And there was a good reason, because Back in the day... Oh, they used to look rubbish, didn't Yeah, you they? used to see the seed yeah. you, down the side. Where, yeah, I remember. Yeah. They, and, were, they and, were really nice. And sometimes on the corners, they had little wispy bits of plastic where kind of sticking off the edges. Yeah, when it'd be like taken off the, the, the production line. Yeah, and you yeah. could so see they were plastic now. I mean... You'd never know, would you'd you? You'd never know. Even this close up... No. You, you can't tell that that is a plastic yeah, pot. You really can't. And I know, you know, we live in a world where 
plastic gets a bad name but when you've got a plastic pot that is going to last you 10 15 20 25 years this is no single use plastic no, it's not. this is going to last you a long long time because it's long virtually time. impossible to break that <coughs> Right, going to go back to it. If you want the, um, the bay tree, 999, the planters are gorgeous as well. 680266 for an incredible deal on the bay tree. But we are going to go back to our mimosa because do you remember one of our regulars, Adam, Clay Adam, messaged in and said he's got a mimosa? There it is. Hey, that was about wow. the size mine got to. Yeah. Yeah, that is looking good. That and is that is planted in clay soil. Yeah, that, well, that's, that's looking happy, that one, isn't it? I mean, absolutely that, marvellous. That looks amazing. And I, Well, you can see that was taken recently because yeah. the, the shrubs so either side have lost their soil. foliage. Um, it's got loads of... Um, and isn't it... Gross in it, has it? That, that's, so it's right above... So I presume that, that fence has got to be five foot, hasn't it? Uh, yeah, probably, well, probably about six foot, mm. yeah, thereabouts. That's the average height, isn't it, for fences? And Sean, what I love about that as well, you see the trees behind every, have lost all their leaves, but look how evergreen that looks. I mean, and it looks nice with that dogwood. I was so just going to say that, the, the, yeah. the contrast, you know, the dogwood next to it. The dogwood next to it, the, next the, to it, the, the red that red and um, green and yellow. Yeah. Amazing. It looks really, really nice. And they have this lovely elegant shape as well, almost um, like an open Christmas tree shape when they get going. Um, Do you know what? I'm going to buy a mimosa, I've decided, Adam. But I, mean, I haven't got one, I'm, I'm going to buy one. But even, I mean, we were saying, sometimes in a really, really cold year, you can lose them. But once they've matured, what you often find is the top part dies back. But if you cut them down, like, like I did with mine, quite often they will reshoot yeah. from further down. So not all is lost. Um, but because of the joy they bring, because they're so unusual, because of that, that colour uplift you get from them in the depths of winter, they're definitely, definitely worth a try, yeah. really worth a And go. I love even when they flowered, the foliage. I mean, I've got a Mediterranean area in my garden. I'm definitely want this in there. Yeah. Because the foliage in summer is going to look incredible, isn't it? And they don't mind really poor soil. They, they're not fussed about rich... In fact, if you put them in really rich soil, you'll probably get lots more foliage and less flower. Put them in quite poor soil, you'll get tons of flower, less foliage. Well, Adam, thank you for sending in that... Uh, that Fabulous picture. And uh, we'd love you to order one today, all of our viewers watching. 510235 is uh, your item number. Um, right, do you know what I'm thinking we should go to next? The shrub collection. Why not? Because this, well, the, in terms of value, I mean, my word, this is crazy. So it's <laughs> 12 winter hardy bare root shrubs for under 20 pounds. So that works out. I'm gonna try and do the maths off the top of my head. Uh, I reckon, I would say 166 each. I, 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 I'm, that was off the yeah, top of my head. 12 into 20, it's like, I'm, yeah, I so think 166-ish. Yeah. Ish. We're doing it on the calculator. There we go. Yeah! Hand it, hand it to that man. That's... I've actually, I, I, there's loads of things that I'm really bad at, but maths, I have got, I've, I've actually got A-level maths and I'm really, I, my arithmetic is good. You put me to shame, I did CSE. But I, got, I did get grade one. That's all right. That's all right. Anyway, 166 per bare root. So, and what a mix. Yeah. Now, they arrive, mix. Just, just, this is how they arrive. And I'll be honest, when they arrive like that, you, you'd be like, oh, Sean and Adam have sent me a bunch of twigs. Um, when you actually unwrap these and then spread them out and you see the, the size of the bare roots, they're fantastic. And all, Adam's going to do all the varieties in a second, but... These have actually been taken from our coal store for the show. So they've, they were picked about a few, well, about five days ago, and they're all ready, because they've been in the coal store, but they're all ready, now they're well, warming up. That's the full scythia there. Yeah, I it mean, is. They're yeah. one of the earliest to flower anyway, yeah. so that, that's already making its move now. Good spot, Adam, you're right, that is. But, I mean, you might say, uh, why bare root? Funny enough, I did a little video about bare root this week, but you might say, why bare root? Well, you could, buy all of these shrubs individually grown in pots and you could pay between 6.99 and 10.99 per plant so yeah. you might, I'd say easily yeah so you might be paying what 180 200 pound yeah. to buy all of these uh, shrubs if they're all pot grown you don't need to do that because bare root literally means the plants are lifted out the ground this time of year all the soil is removed from the root of the plant and because the plants are dormant they don't care, they don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't bother them. They're just sleeping. They're just sleeping. And then, when you get them home, soak them in a bucket of water for 24 hours, plant them back into the ground to the level they were planted at before. They'll get all cosy down into the soil. 
as the soil starts to warm up in the spring, they'll start to form new roots and they'll grow away. And you've got the most amazing selection of yeah. shrubs and you've saved yourself an absolute fortune. God. Well, let's let's go through all of these. I mean, say so the value is just ridiculous. One pound sixty six each. And I'm just thinking about because I live in a new my garden's about three and a half years old. Still lots of gaps. But also maybe you've reached an age where you're sick of having to of putting bedding plants in every year and you just want established shrubs that are going to give you joy, flowers, year after year after year and they're all fully winter so we'll start with the berberis here at the top yeah we've got berberis yeah berberis at the top there which um that's kind of semi evergreen but i mean it's a stunning it's a lo lovely pillar shaped kind yeah. of plum that all, um, gorgeous purple foliage a real uh, kind of a bit of a, a, a sort of a full stop kind of plant if you like because it, it's got that great shape to it so you could you could put that at the side of a path or at the side of some steps or somewhere like that flowers as well as lovely little kind that of yellow, yellow flowers on it, yeah. It. yeah little yellowy flowers but that lovely kind of ready bronze foliage and then sort of moving our, across our lilac lilac i mean we don't need to tell you about lilac do we flowers make <laughs> Time. incredible gorgeous gorgeous fragrance so so easy to grow and then moving along a little bit further on the top there as well we've actually got the white gila there which is um, a really really popular plant it's got these lovely trumpet shaped flowers which look absolutely amazing really easy to grow moving a bit further down here we've got the doitzia this side here you can tell i'm not used to pointing pictures the opposite way around can't you we've got doitzia here then we've got potentilla We've got spirea, then we've got the hypericum hid coat. At the, at the, I love that one. Yeah, then we've got the snowberry, and the snowberry is the one in the middle. You can see with the, the um, then we've got a tamarix. Which, no, I've never grown those. Yeah, the tamarix, which is over here. This tamarix, now they are absolutely amazing for seaside gardens, for really dry gardens, for really exposed areas. So that'd do well in my garden, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, I mean, a really, really super tough plant grows in the poorest, windiest, most awful situations. You see them grow on the coast and they've got this lovely feathery foliage and then about May, June time, May, June time, all these branches explode into this mass of pink flower that looks absolutely knockout, absolutely stunning. I need to grow one of those. And they can grow quite big, can't they? Yeah, they can grow really big. They can be pruned back if you want them to, but somewhere open, somewhere sunny, they'll take any amount of punishment. And they're good in windy situations because they've got very thin kind of wispy branches and they tend to just go with the wind. They don't snap. And the, and the branches are quite dark, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. And they just spread about Ooh. in the wind. But yeah, so that's the yeah, tamarix there. Then we've got uh, a mock orange. Yeah, we've got the mock orange or the Philadelphus. Gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance on those. Yeah. Really sweet fragrance. The bees, the pollinins, pollinating insects absolutely adore these. Then in the middle there, we've got the um, dogwood, cornice, the dog, cornice. Yeah. Incredible red stems in the winter time, which looks so good on a, on a day when you get one of those blue winter days and you've got the blue sky behind that. And then full oh, cycle yeah. with the yellow flowers. So in effect, that's amazing, up there, yeah, isn't it? You've got something all year through. You've got flower colour to start with. You've got berries. You've got fragrance, um, bark colour. You've got fragrance. You've just got so so many different interests with this as well. Um, all the year through, you've got uh, shrubs that are going to be any height from probably about. I mean the. Um, the one at the top, this name's just got out. Berberis. Like Berberis. Yeah, the Berberis is probably going to get to about waist height, all the way through to, say, the Philadelphus. Oh, that's the Spirea there, Douglasii. Lovely, lovely shrub. And um, through to the Deutzia and the Philadelphus, and, that might get a couple of metres tall. And the tall. biggest, I suppose, would be the lilac. Yeah, lilac. Yeah. Lilacs can get yeah, 10, 15 feet tall. Yeah. So, um, now, Adam, would you plant them straight in the ground now or would you start them off in pots? No, I think you could put these straight in the ground, yeah. these, to be honest. As long as the ground's yeah. not frozen or waterlogged, but should be fine now, yeah. shouldn't it? I mean, if you want to order them now and the ground is frozen or waterlogged, what you can do uh, initially is, is, is called heal them in. Yes. And basically all that means is just take all the plastic off of them and in the garden, just dig a, a, a hole in the soil at an angle and just lay them in the hole at 45 degrees, cover them with soil and just leave them in the bundle, in the ground. They'll be quite happy like that for three or four weeks. Yeah. As long as the soil's covering them. They don't want to be indoors or anywhere warm. No. They'd hate that. Outside, cover them with soil to start with at an angle so they don't start to root properly. Then when you're ready to plant them where you want them to be, lift them up again, separate and plant them in their permanent right. position. Uh, we are really busy today. Thank you so much. Uh, for those that just joined us, we've got a very special guest, uh, Adam Wilcott, multi-award winning guy. 
gardener designer and a proper hands-on gardener. I mean, I, I've got the greatest respect for garden designers, but I like the fact that you're both. That yeah, you do these lovely designs, but then you get in well, the garden and do some proper digging. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a gardener. You know, truly, I, I am a gardener. But yeah, yeah. Garden design is just something that kind of people people used to say to me. Well, why don't you do garden design? And I, I said, well, I'm, I've never been trained as a garden designer. And they said, for goodness sake, you won four gold medals at the Chelsea yeah. Flower Show. You're like, if you can't design the garden, who can? And I kind of thought. Yeah, I can design yeah. a garden. Yeah. And so. then he won four gold medals. <laughs> uh, right, Adam, stay there. Not that you're going to move anyway. Because oh. we have got... <laughs> I'm glued to the spot. Uh, a few things to tell you, because I know we get a lot of new viewers at, at 11 o'clock. So, first of all, with every single order today, you're going to get free spring flying bulbs. Now, we say spring. These really are spring, early summer, because it's going to take you from about March into potentially June, aren't they? Yeah, May, June time. The, yeah. Um, yeah, the drumstick alliums will... Because if you think about the Chelsea Flower Show, they always have alliums, alliums the Chelsea yeah. Flower Show. And they're, and they're just at their prime then. So, yeah, right into June, I would say, with this mix. Yeah, I've got tickets for Chelsea this year. Hey. Yeah. It is a celebration. I've not been in years. Uh, so you've got this as a free gift. All you need to do is put in your code YGTV0424. That is a special code. It unlocks all of the promotions on the show. And it will give you £20 worth of free bulbs. Now, if you want to play the system... I'm just putting it out there. So the way I do it, anything with free postage I sometimes do as a separate order because then you get the free gift with it and you're not spending extra on postage. If things have got postage on them, it's sometimes worth kind of going the other way and getting your order to over 40 pounds, then you, you don't pay any postage. So I always just play around my basket, work out what gives me the best deal. I did once, uh, in one week, I did once get eight free bags of crocus bulbs and they're all in the pub garden. That wasn't too many because I put them in the pub so, garden. Just so it so has occurred to me as well, I could on. be talking gobbledygook. Explain, tell me if I am when I get to the end of it. So if you've got to spend £40 or over to get free PMP, I guess it makes sense to buy the most expensive item you can to begin with. Like, yeah. So you get as near to the £40 like the with, with, without multi-paying yeah. multi PMP to start yeah, with. Yeah, no, that does make yeah. sense, Adam. Yeah. It's good today, isn't it? Yeah, you know, sometimes you say so and you think no, it's no, sensible. It's a, and but our regulars, they're really good at... Uh, Milk in the system. No, hang on, that's the wrong word. Getting the most from the show, that's probably the correct way of saying it. Because you don't um, want to build up to it by buying five or six of these things and paying P&P and &P &E, no, do you? you so don't. go straight and get the most expensive to, thing and get there. To be fair, we only ever charge one postage, but it's the highest postage per order. So if it is under £40, you'd only pay one postage, but it would okay. be the, the highest postage out of all the items you buy. Right, I know, Adam, uh, when you uh, were talking about the show, you said, oh, I love the uh, iris. And this is called the uh, Peacock Mix. Uh, now, I think that's a perfect description. I mean, look at the colours and their little faces on these. Yeah, these grow like weeds as well. They really do. They are probably the easiest iris you can grow. They spread out as time goes by to make bigger and bigger clumps. And normally, you think about them as just being blue. But this mix, I mean, I adore irises. I really, really do. Now. Some of you might think, yeah, I like irises as well, but they don't last very long. Well, these are slightly different. I was just going to say that. Because That's, these yeah. don't just have one flower. Sometimes you have four, five, even six flowers on one stem. So ah, one flower right. comes out, lasts a day or so, dies. Another flower comes, another flower comes. So you get a, a right. long period of flowering on these. They're not like those bearded irises where, you know, they go over sort of reasonably quickly. Although they can have multiple flowers as well. Yeah. But, but sometimes the irises, you feel it's all over in a few days, don't you? No, these will go over at least a good couple of two or three weeks. Stunning mix of colours there as well. Do really well in damp soil. In fact, you can almost grow these as marginal plants around the edge of ponds and so boggy these, areas. So these really don't mind wet roots at no, all. No, no, they actually like wet roots. Yeah. In fact, um, where when I moved from Bishop Stortford, my old garden was um, really humus rich, damp kind of soil. And my Irish Siberica did really well there. And then when I moved to Swaffham, where I live oh, now, sand. yeah, really sandy soil. And I've got they my, hate it, they, they've they? gone. They, they just, really? they just yeah. Gone. yeah, they just uh, over two or three years since, well, four years since I've moved, they, they gradually dwindled oh, and disappeared. Bless. And I realised that's because they liked where they were before yeah. that was moist and damp. So even in really heavy wet soils, these will do really, really well. So if you've got plants that struggle in those wet soils, these actually yeah. do quite well. I'm thinking, Adam, you could go for these. Yeah, yes. I might well do. 
Give them a go. Uh, great oh, value. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, five. Well, you need to get some more and just maybe try a different approach. Yeah, uh, I need to go and put them in the damper part of the garden. Yeah. But easy to grow. They come up year after year after year. Uh, all you've got to do is deadhead them after they finish flowering. What you could do every three or four years with these as well, what you'll find is that they'll form a clump, but what you'll find eventually is the centre of the clump starts to die out a bit yes. and they don't really flower yeah. in the centre. So every four or five years, late winter, early spring, dig the whole clump up, discard the, the, the centre bit, break them up into about four or five separate groups, then replant them separately. And what you'll find is then you've got five new colonies of irises that will be reinvigorated and will spread again and give you another four or five years of fantastic colour. Uh, and say, so if you've, I mean, I didn't say wealth of knowledge, but if you've got any questions, come through on YouTube, Facebook, and on your email, ygtv at yougarden.com. Right. I know that you've got a, a, a very much a, a Mediterranean area uh, to your garden. I have. And I can imagine, I don't know if you've got these, but if not, I know you want them. Yeah, I mean, I've got one of these. Ah. Um, and I can't remember what colour it is. Well, I say I've got one of these. I don't know why I've got it, because I've never planted them. So it's just a period. Yeah, yeah I've, got, I've, um, I've, got, I've got one that, I think it's yellow, and it comes up in my garden every year, and every time I think, I never planted that. I don't know where. God. So it must have come in with something yeah. else that I planted. But I I'm mean, just going to find my colour lilies now. I are just completely well, knockout. Aren't I mean, they? there are very few black flowers in the garden, are they? Well, I think there's there's black petunias, isn't there? There's a uh, there's a few plants that say they're black, but they, we've I had mean, a few black lilies. Black on the show. lilies, yeah. Um, but these are absolutely knockout. They make great cut flowers, by the way, as well. They come up year after year after the year. Um, and these do quite well in, in damp, wet soils as well. In fact, there's, um, there, there's one that actually grows in, in, in water almost. I mean, I wouldn't plant these directly into like a pond or somewhere like that, but they do really well in damp soil, sunny position. And they just bring a, a touch of the unusual, they, top of magic they really to the garden. Do. So and I'm just going to find mine, Adam. The leaves Bear as well with. on there, Sean, are incredible as well. Those lovely sort of mottled, sword shaped leaves and then these incredible unusual flowers at the top there absolutely magnificent and inside um, these have what's known as a spave and a spadix so you, you've got the outside bit and I always get this the wrong way around I think the outside bit is the spave, spave yeah, yeah and the little sausage shaped bit in the middle is the spadix so a really unusual different sort of flower a great talking point and because these are this super dark color you could always contrast these with a different kind of plant that's a you know a, a sort of a much brighter color or um, uh, no no again Adam I always keep mine sheltered in the winter. I've got mine in pots and I do give them a bit of protection. I sometimes show them in the garage or the greenhouse. They, they don't really need it. No. I mean, providing you've got, you know, you can plant them, plant them about four or five inches deep in the ground. The, the one I've got, that I don't know where the it came from. The random one. Yeah, I mean, I've lived, I've lived uh, my gut will be five years this year since, um, since I moved in. And last winter we had a minus 12, minus 11, minus 12. And it came up again last summer. So, the, the, you know, they really, really are quite tough um, plants. I found a picture of mine. Shall I send it to you, Stu? Uh, right, let me... they'll, they'll come as little corms that you, know, you can start You can start them off in pots if you want or put them straight in the ground. If you put them straight in the ground, just put a little stick in the soil so you, you, we, so you know where you've put them. But I just think they're so unusual. They're so different. They're, they're such an attractive plant. In fact, there's a, that's what I was trying to think of. There's a white variety of this as well um, called Crowsborough. And I'm just imagining if you grew the black and the white one together, that would be something, wouldn't it? That would be a, a Ooh, sight be to, see, to see those sort of contrasting colours. But... When you look at plants like this sometimes, you, you sort of think, oh, that looks really difficult, it looks really challenging because it looks so exotic, it looks so different. But honestly, they really, really are quite the easiest plant to grow. Somewhere where there's sort of um, sunny above ground, nice moist soil underneath that never really sort of totally dries out. And they'll come back for you year after year, sort of forming bigger and bigger groups and, and just give that difference to the garden, that sort of little talking point. When people, who haven't seen these before see these, they will ask you, wow, where do you get them? What is that? What are they? And I always think that's great when you, you grow something like that and people sort of inquire about it, you know, because it's, it's actually kind of caught their imagination. Well, I've just sent mine to Stu. I've sent it to his personal and, and also the new email. The what new position garden. have you got yours in, Sean? So oh, I've got, at, I've got oh, mine in pots. Yeah. I've got different varieties. I have got the... Um, the black ones, but I just can't find a picture of them. But um, 
The ones that I've got are the, the purple and white ones. Yeah, I think that could be the Crowborough variety I was talking about, the yes, white one there. Yes, it is. Yeah, Zantodeschia Crowborough. Um, yeah. But honestly, I mean, the, the picture I've got, the, the, I'll be honest, it was, they were just starting to go over, but I've had mine about 12 years, 15 I, I mean, years. you'll see it on the screen a bit, but the clumps they've yeah. made as well in the picture there. Huge, great big clumps with multiple flowers as well. So, yeah, uh, just uh, and, it, and they almost look like the kind of plant that you couldn't grow in this country that you might see yeah. in a tropical uh, climate. Or, or you know the Mediterranean somewhere, but they do honestly grow really well here in the UK. And, and I love this variety. It's a double up deal, by the way. So you get three for nine ninety nine, or you can double up and get six of them for just fourteen pounds and ninety eight pence. But I always think, Adam, it's nice to try new things, different things. I love it when people come around and they're a little bit wowed by something and taken aback. Yeah, and that's a good, that's where we're so lucky in the UK because where, we, where we're where uniquely placed in the world, we've, you know, we've got a huge continent of Europe and Africa and you know, to the right of us and you know, inland parts of those continents get desperately cold in the winter, but then we've got that huge warm Atlantic to the left of us. So in this part of the world, we never get to those extreme ridiculous cold temperatures. No, no. You know, that they're in the mid continent but we never get super super crazy hot for long periods of time so it means in the UK we can grow almost the biggest range yeah. of plants of any country or any, yeah, any area true. on the planet so it gives us that chance to experiment um, with these different plants uh, so I, I, I'm just going to share that so there's some of mine in pots and I mean I've had them years but they I mean that started off Adam as I remember buying, buying literally one plant in a, in a small pot about 12 years ago. And over the years, I've just divided them and divided them. Uh, you know, I've sometimes dug, emptied the pots and then sp sp given some to friends and family and things. But I've now got seven pots of that size full of them. Well, sure. Probably about 12 years. I mean, they are magnificent. Yeah, I, must yeah, say, I love them. Absolutely I And I, I love the, again, the leaves. I love that mottled yeah. kind of look on them. So even when the flowers have gone, the leaves still are great. interesting foliage. So really recommend the Calla Lily, particularly this variety, which is this incredible black, three for nine, nine, nine. Or you can double up and go for six for 14 pounds and 98 pence. Six thirty-two two three is your item back. Right, we're going to... We've got um, some roses today. We didn't have any roses yesterday, and a few of you messaged in. So we've got some roses today, and we're going to start off with this one. Now, it's a, it's a bare root rose. We're going to explain how easy it is to, to plant them. But it's a very unusual one called Rhapsody in Blue. What a colour this is, Adam. Yeah, it should be Rhapsody in Purple, in my opinion. Yeah, it is more purple <laughs> and blue, isn't it? But yeah, I agree. I have got this rose. In have my, you really? Yeah, I've got this rose in the ah. garden. Uh, years ago, uh, I um, used to work for a customer and she planted about three of these in her garden. I hadn't heard of that variety before. They flowered and I just thought, OMG, that is such a magnificent colour. So, so different, so unusual. So I put one in my garden a couple of years ago and it is a magnificent rose. And is this the colour that it really yeah, is, Adam? It's, yeah, it's a purple colour. It's got a really sweet fragrance, a gorgeous sweet fragrance. It's like a, what they call a floribunda rose. So um, rather than a hybrid tea rose where you get one stem and one big flower on the top of one stem, what you find with this rose is you get multiple flowers, 20, 30 flowers on the top of one stem. Wow. And what sort of size is that? The, the, the flowers are, are prob or? yeah, I mean, the flowers are probably about that range, about two or three inches across each flower. Um, but because you've got so many buds on, on one stem, it literally flowers for week after week after wow. week. And, and mine, uh, after a, a year or so, just started sending up multiple stems flowering and then it, it finishes flowering and then if you sort of cut the stems down by about a half or a third mine you'll find it minded you'll find it a reshoot and then yeah. it will give you another big period of flowering later summer into autumn but it is it's just a splendid rose i mean it is absolutely gorgeous rose really super healthy foliage i found it to have quite high disease resistance but flowers for months fabulous fragrance incredible colour, beautiful yellow centre to it, those gorgeous stamens in the middle there. Just an absolute beauty and a really easy rose to grow. Uh, sunny spot, I presume? Yeah, open and sunny. Um, it's What I quite liked about it as well is it doesn't grow out sideways very much. It's more upright, which I've liked the habit of it as well. So, um, it, you know, it occupies quite a small space, but more upright wow. than outwards, which I love about it as well. Uh, I think it... Is another one I, uh, that I'm going to uh, add to my order today. Right, so it rhymes as bare roots. 
as you know, for many years, I I never really planted bare roots. I always thought it was going to be hard work, but man, it's so easy, isn't it? Well, it, it, bare roots, uh, growing roses, bare roots was my first job when I left school. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh. So you could tell it's a high quality one because when we were in the packing sheds, uh, anything that had two stems, we used to just send off to the markets to be just sold off because two stems was, was, was no good. When you've got one, two, three, four, five stems, that's a premium rose because yeah. you've got all those stems on there. And what you need to do is, is when you get it home, this, this bit here, where the actual um, stems come out the, um, the roots. So basically this top bit's called the scion, this bit's called the rootstock, uh, and these two have been joined together through a process called budding, but you don't need to worry about that. All you need to do is when you plant these is make sure the soil is about half inch up the green stems. Don't, don't leave the top bit of this poking out the soil. So soil up to about there. I'm glad you've said that because that's where I've always planted. But then there's certain gardeners that put that above the soil, but yeah, I never yeah, have. No, no. Uh, so yeah, I call that the union, yeah, you. That's it, the union. Yeah. That's the union. So sometimes you, you see this sort of thing where you see these poor roses um, almost with little buttress roots where they've been planted so shallow. They're, yeah. they're not even in the ground. Well, well, first of all, if you plant them like that, they get wind rock in the winter because they're not in the ground properly. Secondly, they never really thrive because they haven't really got their root in the ground properly. And thirdly, they don't produce masses of new shoots because they won't if they're planted like that. So planting them with the soil about half inch up the green stems, they'll get firm in the ground, they'll establish properly, they'll keep sending up multiple stems as time goes by and they'll just be a really, really happy and, rose. Um, and this one would be perfect in a pot, of course. Yep, grow well this in a pot. Ground. And when you plant a bare root rose, do you, if it's in the ground, do you often add in just some of our, our premium yeah, compost and absolutely. things? Yeah, absolutely. Mix some, uh, some of our compost in or well-rotted manure or anything like that. You know, mix some good organic material in with the soil before you plant the rose. And, and do you ever use this, root grab? Yeah, that is brilliant. It's is the mycorrhizae. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I swear by this now. Now, a little tip for that as well is, is um, you need the mycorrhizae to be stuck to the roots to do what it needs to do. Now, when you get bare root roses home, soak them in water for 24 hours first. And then what I would do is when you take it out of the bucket, lay it down on a piece of newspaper or card, sprinkle this over the roots. So like salt and pepper, so it sticks to the roots then pop Ooh. it in the ground, and then the remaining bit that's on the paper, just shake that in and around the that's hole. It's a really good tip. Yeah, and that way you've, you've got that stuck directly to the root. That's what's important. Because if it doesn't attach to the root, it's not, it's it's not, not going to do what it needs it? to do. That's a really good tip. I'll be honest, what I try and always do is when I'm planting it, is try and sprinkle this on the wet roots, but that's a far better idea. Yeah. To actually do it as so it's lying down. You, you yeah, like that. Belt, belt and braces, really. So that's right, it's always, uh, it's always nice. To, to work with different people, isn't it? Because we all bring something uh, new. Uh, and I run a garden club in our village, and it's I just chatting to the different members. We, we all share information and pick up little um, hints and tips. Um, what that mycorrhizae actually does, it, it, it creates like a nutrient highway between the ground and the actual rose itself. So it's almost like the mycorrhizae is, is, tra is helping to transport the minerals from the rose into the ground. So, and then also the mycorrhizae benefits from the, the rose itself. So it's like a yeah. symbiotic relationship. And it just really gets that rose off to the best start in life that it can and uh, gives it a lifetime of benefits. So that's a rose rhapsody in blue. Postage is included, 1699 530 065. But we also have a brilliant value pack of roses, which is our Garden Glamour collection. And I was speaking to our head garden yesterday, and we, we, we've got a big variety of roses. But for those of you that want value, and you're thinking, I want lots of roses, but I don't want to pay a premium price, these will cut four pounds a rose, and which postage is, is included. Because if you buy pot-grown roses, you can pay up to £25 yeah. well, we, for, for one pot-grown rose. Here, here at the U Garden Nursery, did you notice the pallets of roses outside? Yeah. So yeah. We, we plant up, this year I think we've, we're going to be planting up about 150,000 roses. But literally we can take one of those, put it in a pot with some compost and charge that kind of price for one. Yeah. Yeah, and, and then charge postage as well, because obviously it's heavier. Some people want to buy a rose like that. That's fine, that's why we do that. But if you want value and variety, 
and you want to pay four pound a rose this is the deal to go for and it's tough times you know the money's tight these days so you know this is a great way i mean imagine if you just moved into a new home for example or you've just taken over a new garden and you know you want roses mm -hmm. but you know your well, budget can't stretch well we both did that adam and i we we we, we both moved, and uh, you moved a little before me, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. But we both started afresh with new gardens, and you're right. I mean, I, I you could spend <laughs> tens and tens of thousands on a new garden. It's easily done. You, you really yeah. could. Um, but even if you've got an established garden, even just to keep it looking good and to add interest to it, you've got to sometimes watch the pennies. So this is a brilliant, brilliant deal. And all of these roses, even though they bear roots, they'll produce many, many roses in the first year, won't yeah, they? Yeah, I mean, exactly what I said to you a minute ago, plant them the same way as before, soak them in water for 24 hours before you plant them. But every variety that we've got here was actually bred before I was born. Now. If you bear in mind... So they're about 30 years old, at least. <laughs> yeah, I wish. So if you bear in mind, I'm 58 years old, and these roses are still as popular as ever, that's because these are just the most amazing varieties, and they've all got incredible stories behind them. We, you know, we've got Queen Elizabeth in yeah. here. We've got pink and red Queen Elizabeth. We've got Peace. We've got Pascali, which is a fantastic uh, white rose. And we've got Arthur Bell, which is actually um, named after a whiskey uh, company. So they've all got their stories behind them. The Peace Rose, I mm. find the most emotive of all, because the Peace Rose was bred back in 1935. And at the end of the Second World War, when there was a huge meeting at the UN in 1945, each member country of the UN was given one of those Peace Roses to take back to their own yeah. country to, to learn the lesson of, from here on in, we need to keep peace in the world. You know, we, 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 we don't want another world war. So, you know, yeah. so many great so, stories behind them. So they arrive like this and they are very tightly wrapped. Um, that just saves on postage. Obviously, it means it can go in a smaller box. All of our packaging is 100% recyclable, by the way. But you, when you actually unwrap these and spread them out, they're all individually labeled as well. We've taken a few off, but you can see there, there's your colour tag, so you've got a white one, you've got the yellow one, there's the uh, peach coloured one there, there's a red, and there's a pink, oh yeah, just in the middle there as well. So you want to unwrap them all, so they arrive like that, unwrap them all, give them a great soak, and Adam, and we, we say minimum of two hours, but I'm with you, Adam, do it overnight, why not? Yeah, just put them in a bucket, leave yeah. them in a bucket for t uh, overnight or for 24 hours, and they'll, you know, it's, they're not, it's not yeah. going to do them any harm at all. What was that, Adam? What fell? Oh, oh is that pot? Yeah, the one tray. of the trays. Um, just slipped down. You were somewhere. So do that, and then plant them, as we've said, and they will flower. You get loads of roses in the first year. And do you know what I'm noticing on them as well? Yeah, so, so these have been out of the cold store, so the way it works here, we actually broadcast from the actual nursery. There's 11 acres of plants outside. So when it's, when it's a plant, it's literally been picked from outside and brought in. Uh, it's our lovely Craig that helps us do that. But when it's something like this, a bare root, this has actually been in cold store. So it's been in like a, the equivalent of a, a giant fridge. Obviously it's been brought out for the last few days. Uh, Tuesday afternoon these were brought out. It's Thursday now, but already they're coming to life, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, there's buds on there already. Yeah. So I mean, that... they may have had a few already, but now they just want... They're like us, Adam. They want to get started. They want to get in the garden, plants don't they? Plants want to grow. At the end yeah. of the day, plants want to grow. Um, and, you know, this is it's just such a magnificent way of, of getting roses. I mean, at this price, you could get two or three bundles of these and just plant an absolute huge rose yeah. garden. And so you, you've got... Uh, five varieties here that are so well established. Uh, they've got fragrance, they've got disease resistance, they've got colour, some are hybrid tea, some are yeah. floribundas. So just a magnificent mix. God. Well, can I say thank you to everyone that's ordered, getting lots of new viewers today. Uh, if you are new, we're here every Wednesday, 10 to 1, every Thursday, 10 to 1, and every Sunday, 10 to 2. Um, I'm normally here, uh, Bex isn't here today, she's going to be on QVC later, uh, you're going to see more of Adam this year, and we have a mixture of guests and presenters here, but I can honestly say, everyone, everyone that you're ever going to see on the show is passionate about gardening. They really are. All of our experts are passionate about gardening uh, with a wealth of knowledge to share as well. Now, we did mention uh, root grow with mycorrhizal. And if they can, oh, we're still not quite sure what that does. Here's uh, a little clip of film to enlighten us.
Root grow mycorrhizal fungi is suitable for flowering plants, trees, shrubs, and edibles, ensuring a far greater chance of survival and improved natural vigor. Simply apply by sprinkling the granules over the base of the planting hole to roughly match the area of your new plant's pot base. Just one or two scoops per plant is usually enough. Place your plant directly onto the granules, ensuring direct contact with the plant roots. This is important to help the mycorrhizal fungi propagules, contained in the granules, colonize your plant's roots. Now you can backfill the planting hole as usual. Within a few weeks, the mycorrhizal fungi will create a secondary root system that will support the plant for its entire lifetime, vastly increasing the uptake of vital nutrients and water from the soil. Uh, and that is, where is one? There you go. It's your mycorrhizal. Oh, that's your recocious one, actually. Where's the other one gone, Adam? Uh, oh, here we go. So, I've got plenty here. <laughs> really, really, really brilliant product that we highly recommend. And if you want to add it to your order, it is Wonder Blow 066. And almost every plant that on is. the planet has its own kind of relationship with different types of mycorrhiza fungal as well, fungi as well. And plants, a lot of plants, well, most plants can't grow unless they've got that relationship with that fungus. So there you go. Win-win with that, isn't it? Mm. I was a bit late to the party on that one, Adam. I only started using it in the last couple of years. But um, that is brilliant. I have some great results. Right, now our best-selling product of all time here at Garden, and we have sold millions of litres of it, is our premium professional compost. And it is absolutely superb. There you go, Adam. Get in there. Oh, it's been it. a while. I have to. Everyone does it. Oh, yeah, the reason I smell it is because, well, I love the smell of compost because it reminds me of my first job when I left school. I thought so, your first job was roses. Well, it was roses, but it's a rose growing place at a garden centre. So, ah. yeah, so, yeah, the, the, well, quick story there. I only did it for about a year and a half because it was a garden centre and I thought I was going to be involved with plants and all that kind of stuff. But it was rose growing. And uh, when you actually grow roses, it's a tough old job, especially this time of year. So, yeah. so I kind of, I didn't stay there that long. And I went to somewhere else where I was more hands on with actual plants and customers. That's what, I really, want, yeah, that's what I really want to do. But, but I remember when I first walked into this place, they took me into the greenhouses and there was just this gorgeous earthy kind of smell of compost. And whenever I smell it, I always think of spring and things growing and being happy and thriving. And that's why I smell Don't it. Don't you think our compost smells particularly good though? It does, because again, if you smell certain compost and they smell mildewy they've got that kind of I don't know just unpleasant kind of some of like what I call it dank smell that's it yeah yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Mm. And, and and you know the compost isn't fresh but this you smell this and it, it's just got a, a yeah. really sort of healthy um, kind of aroma to it now now is the time of year where we start to use more compost and many of you will be growing seeds in the very near future if not now a lot of you in the near future, we'll be buying maybe our bedding plants as plug plants and growing them on. Maybe you've got house plants that could really do with a bit of TLC and need repotting right now. Superb for those. Um, a lot of the bare roots, if you want to start them off in pots, um, Adam was saying about the hostas earlier, starting them off in pots. Yeah, again, brilliant. brilliant compost for that. And this is, I mentioned earlier about uh, us growing 150,000 roses on the nursery this year. That's just one of these. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. This is one thing we'll be growing. Um, this is actually the compost we use on the nursery to grow all of our plants, to make up all of our hanging baskets. Quite often we'll repot plants as well. If, if, if they get to stage and we've got too many of them, we haven't sold them, we'll just put them into the next size pots. So it's really important for you garden to, to have the best compost. So for many, many years, this was the compost that we used, but it was never shared with the customer. But so, I, don't know, I don't know how long it was now, several years, suddenly that, that light bulb moment came and thought, well, hang on, surely our customers should have access to this amazing compost. So we've been selling it for many years. It's our number one product. It's our highest rated, and we would love you to try it today. And we do, price-wise, we don't claim to be the cheapest. It's 24 98 for 100 litres. But actually, if you think you're getting the free gift worth 20 pounds, so do, you're gonna get 150 spring summer frying bulbs, also, many of you are club members. We've got the Discount Club, and that means it's five pounds for the year on auto renewal. You can cancel any time, by the way, but that gives you 250 off every time you buy the compost, nearly 250 off. So actually, some of our compost, 
isn't that expensive, it's actually really good value. And also, don't think of it just that way around. If you think then the extra plants it's going to give you, the extra fruit, yeah, the extra yeah. flower, You're the, so right. the extra vigour it's going to yeah. give you, the, the value in your garden is, you know, yeah. is, is, You're so is, right. is the addition, the other side of it. So you look at it in the round, you know, and we, yeah. we all know in life, don't we, if we just pay a little bit more for the high quality items, long term, what, buy cheap, pay twice, you know, that's yeah. what happens. And true story, last year, I, I, I run a garden club and we have a plant sale every year. And I made up lots of hanging baskets to sell at the plant sale. And most of them were grown in this compost. But there's a few that weren't. And I, it, was a, it was some reduced item I got from a supermarket. It was one of those composts. It was a coir type thing. You add water and mix it up. And do you know what? And I only did a few in that. And those hanging baskets were just rubbish compared to the others. And I really, I should have taken some pictures actually, but they just didn't ever take off really. No, no. So, as, and a really good point there, it, the value when it comes to what it's going to do for your plants and your, your fruit and your veg and everything else is incredible. So let's break it down because 50% of this is composted wood fibre and that really gives it a great texture, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. What the wood fibre does, Sean, as well, it, it keeps the texture of the compost nice and open. So yeah. at the end of the day, you don't want a compost that's going to dry out, but you don't want a compost that's going to be waterlogged either. So, you know, it keeps the water percolating through, but also it keeps the compost nice and open so the air, the oxygen, gets down to the roots of the plants because it's really critical for plants to have oxygen down at the root level, not just the top. So if the compost is too heavy and um, compact, then those roots cannot get the correct amount of oxygen and I guess cannot spread through it either. Yeah, either. exactly. So you know, that, you know, that does both things. It keeps the compost open, it lets the roots penetrate through, it lets the oxygen get down to the roots as well. This is a, a reduced peat compost as well. And you can see there the difference between the standard and the non-standard yeah. compost. You know, the, the root Huge system. Huge difference. Yeah, I mean, you've got what, that's what's called a fibrous root system. And that's really important to a plant in its early stages because those little fibrous roots they're the roots that are going to absorb the nutrients, going to absorb the water from the surrounding soil, from the ground when they're finally planted. They're the starter roots, if you like, before the real big anchoring roots develop. So the plant on the right, for example, in the standard compost, that's going to struggle a little bit because it hasn't got that fibrous root system to, to really sustain it. Whereas the one on the left, when you put that in the ground, the surface root level on that is so colossal that that's just going to yeah. root in really, really quickly and absorb the nutrients oh. and grow away. So as Adam said, you've got the composted wood fibre, you've got three different types of peat, the light and dark peats, and we have reduced the quantity of that over the years to meet environmental obviously needs, but we try and put in the minimum to give the maximum results, which Definitely. is fabulous. Yeah, and we've got a slow release fertilizer yes. in here as well. I've so just seen one pop the up little there. green beads in there. So that gives you feed over a long period of time. It's not like one of those um kind of fizzy energy drinks that give you a big boost of energy yeah. and then and then, then you go gone. and then you will don't you? It's like, yeah. Oh I've got loads of energy for ten minutes and no, like, yeah. yeah. These are gonna keep feeding the plants over a long period of time and sustain the plants especially in their early stages when you're growing bedding plants you're starting things off from seed for example and also in this there's a wetting agent and what that wetting agent actually does it means it well I always give the analogy of a wetting agent it sort of makes um, your compost like kitchen towel it makes it absorbent it wants to suck yeah. in the water we've all had that experience of we sometimes with hanging baskets or pots when they dry out and all your plants are drooping you oh no and you, you, you get the water can, you pour the water on, and it just runs. And it's straight off. And goes side. straight down. Yeah, it's so annoying. Yeah, and that's because there's not enough wetting agent. You know, it almost makes that, that compost almost become like hydrophobic, yeah. if and you like. It, and you keep watering, and you're thinking, well, I'm just wasting all this water. I'm getting soaked, and the yeah. basket's not getting a drop of it. Um, but this, when you, with the wetting agent, yeah. it wants to absorb that moisture. It wants and to rehydrate. Uh, Peter, head gardener, he, he described it, and this kind of really stuck with me. He said, it's like it makes the water water sticky <laughs> yeah. so the water just goes or, or makes the compost sticky i should say but the water the compost uh sort of sticks together don't yeah they? yeah it, yeah they, they, they want to be, become a union whereas yeah. in some compost it's like oh keep the water off of me yeah. it's like you it's don't like want i'm that. happy to just dry out and let the plants die <laughs> yeah. so it's got a brilliant wetting agent anything else did you talk about the uh ph on oh, this yes it's ph balance as well yes uh, what in simple terms 
um, you've, you've got alkaline or acid soils. So, you know, very alkaline could be up to pH 14, very acid would be pH 1, which would be insane. Neutrals around about 7. And what that means is if you keep the compost roundabouts neutral, that means a much, much, much bigger range of plants yeah. can thrive in that so, compost. So actually every plant on the show today, apart from the... Leucothoe. Leucothoe. I like the way it says that. I was going to say Lakothi, but Leucothoe. Um, that needs, uh, that loves an acid soil. That needs efficacious compost. But everything else, this compost is going to be super fun. And we actually say from seeds all the way through to trees as well. Uh, brilliant compost. And if you buy it now, it's got postage included. Remember, if you get your order to over £40, so anything else you add to your order, get it to over £40 and they'll all get free delivery as well. And if you use the code, you are going to get your free gift, which is 150 summer flying bulbs. Now, Adam, you've got loads of uh, new items coming up, haven't you? I have, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go and do a little, uh, little swap around in a moment. And yeah, kind of, yeah. Because yeah. we'll get one free, that's, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just a fantastic choice today. I'm going to have a tiny cough, Adam, if that's OK. <laughs> <laughs> there Right, so cough's gone. It's, it is getting better. It's just taking a while. It is, believe it or not. So, so, uh, there's so much of it around, but yes, definitely a lot better. Voice is back. Here we go. So uh, lots of you placed your orders for these already. They are a Dahlia dinner plates. Now, don't forget, this year, you're going to get Dahlias that are the size of dinner plates. We are looking about eight inches in terms of diameter, which is brilliant. I mean, these are showstoppers. Um, very easy to grow. They'd like a sunny spot. You can leave dailies in throughout the winter. It depends where you live, depends how cold it is. But many people now do leave the dailies in and they come back year after year after year. Or you can, of course, lift them as well. Massive displays, kind of um, mid-summer all the way into early winter so these will keep flowering until you get your first frost now i learned something new today and this is, this is really stuck with me actually if you want to use these as cut flowers only pick them when they're fully open if you pick them in bud they will not open in a vase of water so do do bear that in mind wait till the blooms are out and then you can have them as gorgeous cut flowers as well. Brilliant deal. I mean, these are the, the giant dahlias, five for £9.99, or you can double up and go for 10 for £14.98. Then, oh my word, I love this one. This is definitely going in my basket today. It's the Blackberry Ripple. This is a thriller of a plant. This is a plant that really, it's not shy and retiring. It's not gonna go, don't look at me. I'm just gonna fade in with the rest. Now, this is an attention grabber. It's striking, it's bold, it's beautiful. Again, it's gonna flower all the way from about June, July onwards into October, November. And it will, if you keep cutting off the dead flowers, it will keep repeat flowering. Another tip Adam said, and I'm with him on this, sometimes it's hard to work out which are the dead flowers, which are the new ones, they look very similar. The dead flowers are just small, kind of cone-shaped, pointy. The new flowers are round, as about to come into a flower from bud. Brilliant deal on these. You can double up and go for six tubers for 14 pounds and 98 pence. Now you may have missed these. These are the lavender hidcock, often called uh, English lavender, of course. Normally, well, they are three ninety nine each, but we are doing a triple deal, and you get three for eight ninety nine. So lavender, it does look good on mass, doesn't it? It looks great down the front of a pathway. It looks great in a formal border. It actually looks really nice just individually in a pot as well. But what it gives you is fantastic, and I really mean this. Fantastic fragrance. It's an 
absolute wonderful plant if you want to attract the, the pollinators into your garden. You know, you're going to find hundreds of bees and butterflies just buzzing around this every single year. It's, it's easy to grow, just give it a nice sunny spot, it does not mind poor soil. So if you live in an area where you think, oh my soil's rubbish, the lavender won't think that, it'll be very, very happy in poor soil. Very easy to maintain, once it's flowered, just take the dead flowers off, uh, take the top growth of the lavender off and then it will grow back and flower year after year after year. 510319 for the lavender hidcot. Love that, I've got that in my garden from you garden and it's absolutely superb, never lets me down. Now one of the best deals today are hostas. Hostas are known for their really colourful and varied foliage. There's so many different varieties of hostas. I like them for shady spot. They will tolerate sun, but if you've got that difficult shady spot, hostas are an absolute winner. Now you could put these straight in the ground as a bare root, or you could start them off in pots. If you are prone to slugs and snails, we do recommend getting stroll sheets on the show today. They may flower this year, not going to guarantee it, but they may flower this year. If not, they will certainly flower year two onwards. But to be honest, I'm personally not that bothered about flowers and hostas. It's up, for me, it's all about the foliage. And you'll definitely get gorgeous foliage this year and for many years to come. The deal today, you're going to get 10 bare roots for £9.99. 580 049. But do remember, you need to use that offer code YGTV. 0424 to unlock all of the different promotions that we have got on offer today. Then we have got our Lukothi. Our Adam pronounces it. Lukothi. 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 I like that. Lukothi. Or Lukothi. Lukothi. I like that. Lukothi. Or Lukothi. No, Lukothi. I'm going to go with that. So. Gorgeous foliage, amazing foliage, evergreen. You will get the little white flowers in the summertime. It does, it's the one plant on the show today that does need an acid soil. So if you are gonna grow it in the pots, or if you're gonna put it in your beds and borders, you do need to mix in some ericaceous compost. We have got that available on the show as well. Uh, five to one, zero, five, eight, at just eight pounds and 99 pence. Then we've got uh, one of Adam's favourites, the peacock mix of iris. Now these are actually bare roots. You can get several flowers uh, each year on each one of these. But what is interesting, they do not mind a damp, wet spot. So if you've got that air in your garden that never properly dries out, maybe you've got a, um, a pond, these will be very happy at the side of a pond. Uh, you can grow them in pots, but again, keep them very well watered. But what amazing colours. And what amazing little faces on these as well. I think they're stunning, don't you? And you get five bare roots, nine, nine, ten. And they really, they do grow and spread really well. One of Adam's tips, and you'll know this if you've grown irises before, as they form big clumps, the middle can sometimes get a little bit uh, unproductive and can stop flowering. So you can always dig them up as a big clump, separate them, divide them, and get many, many more irises. 580-040 at nine pounds and 99 pence. And then one of my favorites, I love, I love Macalla lilies. They're so extraordinary. They're dramatic, they're striking. And this color is pretty much a jet black, isn't it? It's like the darkest of chocolates with a slight burgundy edge. And again, these come back year after year after year. Uh, 9.99, 6.32.23. It's your item that you can double up and go for six of those for 14.98. Now there's been a lot of interest in the mimosa. Uh, lots of you talking about this on our group chat as well. I'm gonna give this a go, you know. Haven't got a mimosa and it's just extraordinary. So it's a Mediterranean plant. You're going to find it in France, Spain, New Zealand, all across the world, really, in hotter climates. But you can grow it in the UK. We say winter hardy to minus five. So you do want to think about a sunny, 
sheltered spot. That's where it's gonna do, do best. We recommend a well-drained soil, but Adam, uh, who uh, messaged in, he's got clay soil and he's managed to grow one of these very successfully. And what it will do is give you the most incredible, I mean, these like, I describe them as little yellow pom-poms. And you get these very, very early spring, depending on where you live, but I've seen these flower in January, February, March time. And they're in the right position, they're really fast growing. So you can get several feet of growth just in the first uh, few years on these. And they are evergreen with the most delightful foliage as well. Uh, 24.99, postage included, 510.235 is your item number for that one. And then if you're looking for an absolute deal, our bay tree is down by 20 pounds today. Um, bay trees always look good, don't they? Even in the harshest of winter's months, they never seem to look tatty. Though you do get obviously the flowers in the uh, summertime with these, but gorgeous foliage. And of course, you can use the leaves for cooking, whether you're gonna use this in stews, casseroles, you get the most amazing aromatic flavours from just adding a few bay leaves. Um, 9.99 is the best price we've ever, ever done on those. And that is 680 to double six. But if, if somebody owes you some money, can you send in the bay leaves? <laughs> That's very good, Adam. Told you my, told you, told you my jokes were dire. I actually quite like that one. I actually quite like that. Tumbleweed. No, it was good. We like that one, yeah. <coughs> oh. Hang on. Choke up chicken. That's what my mum my used to say, choke up chicken. We'll talk about the lovely pots. And <laughs> these pots, these pots are amazing as well. <clears throat> UV resistant, frost resistant, lightweight as well, which is absolutely fantastic. So for instance, if you've got a roof garden, if you've got a balcony, if you've got somewhere like that where sort of weight is an issue, these are so, so super lightweight. And also drainage holes in the bottom there as well. Fantastic drainage holes, so they're always gonna drain really, really well. And what I like about these in particular is this little lip around the top as well that makes them really easy to pick up and carry around. And I was saying earlier on, Sean, I used to be a bit of a snob about plastic pots, but they just look so incredibly yeah. realistic now because you don't see seams, you don't see joints, you don't see all those little kind of flaky bits that you used to see on them previously. And in recent years, I've spent quite a lot of money on um, terracotta pots and pots like that oh. that are so-called frost resistant. And then, like last year, when we had a minus 11, minus 12, I thought my pots yeah. were frost resistant. I went out late spring to move some, and as I went to pick them up, like a circular piece just came off the oh, top. Like, so annoying. Like a whole circular disc yeah. of the top of the syrup, and then it left all this jagged top underneath. And the pot was hopeless. I think, I think the trouble is, if you look back at the last two years, two years ago we had a summer that was 40 degrees around here. Yeah. And then in the winter, we, 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 last winter you got minus 11 where you yeah, live. Yeah, yeah. I got minus 10. So those extremes of temperature just play havoc on terracotta. They do. Not with these. And also another good thing about these type of pots as well is terracotta pots wick away the moisture. So plants dry out a lot more quickly so than terracotta true. pots. These conserve the moisture as well, which is good. And also on terracotta pots, eventually you can get all that green mold or green yeah. algae rather on the yeah. outside that looks really unattractive. That won't happen with these. These are always going to look super. Do you know what? I realise we have gone wrong sometimes with terracotta as well. I've, got, I've had all that green algae, then got the pressure washer out and then blasted it all over your garden. <laughs> no, I've yeah. actually broken the pot with the pressure oh, washer. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. Have you ever done that? Uh, well, if it's already cracked or damaged, yeah, you, you can. Yeah. So, so they, they make sense, but they look so good as well. Now, loads of you going for these. I'll be honest, we have had this offer running for a few weeks now, and we do not keep offers going forever on you. You can't, I'm not, I'm not being funny. They, these cannot stay at this price indefinitely. But at the moment, they're working out six pounds each. And they're such a good size. I mean, you could even grow fruit and veg in here. I mean, we do, I'll be honest, they, the best pots are really our heavy duty commercial pots, but they look commercial. So if you wanted to grow 
potatoes, fruit trees, raspberries, strawberries. You could do it in these, but they look great with your plants as well, yeah, don't they? Yeah, Fantastic. and you can do fruit trees because, like, we've got this lovely cordial lining here, which we're going to talk yeah. about in a moment, which looks magnificent. But I mean, these days as well, you can get these incredible um, tiny little fruit trees that are only about sort of two or three feet tall, apple trees and pear yeah. trees. That, that, this would easily we've, be enough root system for them. They wouldn't need any more. We've got a mini Stella cherry on the website that I love. Yeah, and we've got. And Thank we've got you. A little Stella, it's called. And we've got some apricot trees and all sorts. But they're just such versatile, good all-round pots. Amazing value. I am going to say grab them today while we've got such um, great prices on these. And that will, those prices will not last indefinitely. They really won't. I mean, they normally, for two of those, you normally pay £26. They're really hey, good, aren't they? Did you say that? Did it say £12.99? £12.99. Yeah, it should do. Yeah. yeah. Well, that is the price. So we've, we've taken a pound <laughs> off, but we've then given you a free one. So there you go. Spot on, Adam. Yeah, £12.99. Thank you for covering me while I cough, by the way, Adam. I'm glad I didn't turn them over and it said £1.99. <laughs> no, really. £12.99. Yeah. yeah, no, that is, a, that is the correct price, you can imagine. Uh, right, what... You've flattened all my compost now. I'm oh, sorry. I don't like it flat. I like it all looking all... No, there we go. Oh, it's good go. to be back I in there, isn't actually, it? I did that, it wasn't your fault. I was just blaming you. I do love our compost as well. It's great, you, isn't it? Yeah. You just want to play it all the time. You do. It just feels so lovely, do it? Just, yeah. <laughs> it's all, it's all like it's almost like therapy. It's like if you're yeah. stressed, just 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 run your hands through that compost. It almost kind I of must admit, every calms time, you down. Every time we go to my greenhouse site, and I I've I that's where I store my compost. It, I always feel the moment I open up a bag of compost and I start planting this yeah, up, I feel really it's great good. stuff. Brilliant. Right, we're gonna move on to a stunning cord line now called Southern Splendour. Um, I've got many cord lines in my garden, but in terms of colour, this is one of the most dramatic, isn't it? This is magnificent. I, I mean, planted wow. a similar varieties for this uh, to this um, some really lovely sort of uh, tom tom pots for a, a customer in Cambridge before Christmas, and I've got a picture on my phone. I should send it uh, to Stuart really, but they, they look just magnificent. I mean, they look yeah. just fantastic. And again, bear in mind it's the third week in January right yeah. now. Uh, and this is picked straight from our nursery. The colour is magnificent. You know, this almost looks like it's been up, you know, sort of uplighted, really, doesn't yeah. it? Because yeah, I know you, the edges are kind of flesh aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, just such a knockout colour this time of year. And also this time of year, when everything is so dull and so miserable and the light levels are so low, they stand out. They just stand out more magnificently than they do in the summer. Real, real sort of great mood lifters, real lovely, interesting plants. Plants, of th these are really wind tolerant as well. We've had an awful lot of winds lately. So, you know, these just blow in the wind. They've got these nice, strong leaves. But the great thing about these, sometimes you can see similar plants to these, like yuccas, for example, and people are always terrified about the ends being really sharp and really spiky. These are not. The, these, these, these are soft on the end. These, these points on the end aren't sharp. No. So, you yeah, know, they're not going to poke you in the eye. They're not going to damage your skin. They're, they're um, just friendly plants. Now, we do class cordylines as being winter hardy, but obviously with climate change, you just never know sometimes what you're going to get in the depths of winter. So I know a couple of years ago, a few people lost their cord lines. I, I lost a, a couple of my little baby ones, and then some of my bigger ones, I lost the crown, but then they sprouted from the bottom. Yeah. Do, you, do you sometimes tie yours up if it's yeah. going to be really cold, yeah, Adam? Literally, so if we just put something again on the top here, all you've got to do is, is just, I mean, use an old pair of tights or anything like that, really, and, and just... Um, I'm not sure I've got any of them in I've my drawer. I've got any of old pair, old pair of socks, even. So I've got some old socks. Just some old socks, and tie them round top and bottom like yeah. that. And then get some horticultural fleece. Now, don't get those bags that are just single. Get a roll of horticultural fleece and go round and round and round and round and round loads and loads and loads of times. And then just tie the fleece off at the top and that will give these a maximum amount of protection possible if, if you can't move yeah. them indoors. And just leave that, you can leave that all through the winter because horticultural fleece lets the light through. So the plant is going to be quite happy inside. But it's going to be warm. Yeah, and then in the spring, just you know, take the ties yeah. off, let it open out again, and it'll be absolutely yeah. fine. I mean, so that is only if, it, if you know it's going to be particularly cold. We may not get lots more frost now. You just don't know, do you? You, you really I mean, can't It's really tell. warm next week, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's I mean, next week, some places 13, 14. I know. And 10, 11 at night. And last week, it wasn't getting to that during the day, was it? I know. So, and what, another little thing these do as well, as they grow, 
eventually they almost look like little kind of fake palm trees because what you'll find is, and don't worry about this, because what you'll find is as the plant matures you'll start to see a lot of the lower leaves start to turn yellow and look a little bit sad. Don't think your plant is unwell, that's its normal process and what it'll do as time goes by it will shed those lower leaves and then eventually it forms like a little trunk. Yes. And then the leaves keep growing from the top and that, that's just another um, gorgeous little feature of this plant as it God. matures. Well, um, it is uh, down to 24.99, postage is included. Absolutely spectacular, 680252, uh, saving five pounds. Do love that. I've got, say, many cold lines in my garden, but this will make some of mine look a bit dull. Such a huge colour range of them though. Years yeah. ago it was just the red one and the green one. And the green one, and, yeah. And now there's, yeah, there's so many different types. Yeah. Thanks to fantastic breeding. Like I do, I, yeah, absolutely. Fantastic breeding. I do think gardens, I mean, from when we were children, gardening is so much more exciting now, isn't it? Yeah, the, the, yeah, the variety, the different types of plants that are available now is, is just colossal. Yeah. And even in, in kind of individual plants, I remember when I was a kid, like daylilies were kind of always orange. You only got orange ones, and now there's just almost every colour you can yeah. think of it. Yeah, we, we, we've got and, such a, a mind-blowing choice. And we should say we've got an incredible selection here at New Garden. And you can shop across our website. So we're showing you, obviously, a selection of plants today. But don't forget, you can go onto our website, buy whatever you want. Just the golden rule is always put in YGTV0424 when you check out. And that will unlock all of the extra promotions available. Right. We have got a brilliant price reduction now on our corners, the Midwinter Fire. Perfect name for this because it's midwinter. And it's on fire, isn't it, yeah. this one? The, the stems on this, on a sunny day in wintertime, yeah. when you've got that blue sky behind, oh, my goodness me, these look absolutely magnificent. I mean, this, this one has been slightly cut back because, obviously, for P&P &P purposes, and we, we have to trim it back. But when, you know, this gets about two or three feet tall. It's not a huge, uh, huge cornice. It's reasonably compact. But, oh, my goodness me, in the middle of wintertime... Yeah when you've got these fiery, fiery red stems, it just looks fabulous. And then you can all do other things with it as well. You can put some l lovely spring flowering bulbs underneath. So daffodils, I can hear a, bl a blackbird singing outside. Say, yeah. yeah. You, you can put some- uh, I can like too, a, it's, it's lovely. Daffodils underneath or crocuses uh, or some little uh, winter aconites or even snowdrops. And it just creates that wonderful winter moving into spring kind of scene and feeling. Really, really easy shrubs to look after. Uh, they they do well in full sun, they do well in sort of dappled shade. They don't like to be in super, super dry soil, so moistish soil, but they'll actually do quite well in quite wet, even heavy soils as well. And you do get the little flowers, of you course. You do get yeah, little yeah. flat heads of flowers on there as well. Lovely green um, foliage in the spring. And the, the foliage is a fabulous contrast, Sean, isn't it? It with is. Those red stems. Because it's like well. a, quite a bright, limey green yeah. almost, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And um, what you can do as well. You can, if you want, from time to time, take some of the older stems out and then that will encourage new stems to come because the, the, the newer stems are the ones that have the, the brighter colour color yeah. in winter. So uh, any of the... Uh, that's what I used to do. I, I went my last garden and, yeah, the old wood I just, just take off in the uh, early springtime or yeah. autumn. And then you get new shoots come and those new shoots will give you the best colour yeah. again the following but year. But that is an amazing winter. price. got so many good deals today. Uh, 9 99 5 to 1 three six zero and uh, I know because we're getting lots of new viewers uh, just around you some of the basics so we always have a special offer code on the TV show it changes every week this week's is YGTV 0424 always put that in and it will unlock all the extra sort of hidden promotions but you will get as well as things like Buy one, get one freeze. You get free postage if you spend over £40. You've got double up deals. But also, you will get your free gift as well. Look at that. And these are 150 spring flowers. We say spring, but it's spring into summer, actually. Right into it? summer. You've got those gorgeous ixias there, which are summer yes. flowering. I've grown those before. Tulips, obviously, which will be out about April, May time, looking magnificent. And these are quite short variety of tulips as well. Oh, anemone blander. Mine have started flowering now, which is a bit silly early, but they'll flower for week after week after week and spread everywhere. Then you've got these um, drums, uh, yes, spherocephalons, um, which look absolutely amazing. These are called grape hyacinths, because if you hold the flower upside down, they look like little bunches of grapes. So that's where they got their name from. But Ixias are great as well. Lovely, or corn, I think their common name is. This lovely mix of colours in here. But you might think as well, 
it's January time, a bit too late to put tulips in the ground, but I've, uh, I've got a bag of bulbs. I did have a bag of bulbs. Yeah, I've got the bag of bulbs with me here. <laughs> And even when, you know, when I'm feeling these bulbs, these bulbs in, in here are nice. In fact, I'll tell you what. Let's open, open them up. Let's, open, let's, be, let's throw caution to the wind. I'll give you some, yeah, Sean. These tulips here, in fact, I'm going to go even further than that. I'm going to actually, because we've got, we've got, I'm going to actually open one of the individual packets and show you. And look, even now, those, those tulip bulbs are lovely yeah. and solid. If they yeah. were mouldy or soft, they'd be no good. But they're already starting to shoot. But it doesn't matter that it's January. Just get them in the ground as soon as you get them home. And they, they will flower for you this year. So don't worry about being late. In fact, they're even producing little tiny roots from the basal plate there already. They, they just want to go yeah. in the ground. And Sam, I've got the alums here, the mascari. Um, there's nothing sadder than leaving some bulbs in a bag and not doing anything with them. I, I do don't... see that sometimes in customers' sheds, they've forgotten oh, about them. And, it's all, it's and all think, sad. Oh, it's you know, that, all that potential, because I always say when you plant a bulb, you plant a promise, because in the middle of every bulb, the flower is already there. Yeah. It's just waiting to burst out of the bulb. So um, we want these to find a happy home today. So all of you lovely people watching, no matter how small your order is today, you know, maybe on a budget, maybe it's that time, it's January, you're like, mm, don't have a lot of spare cash. Even if you place a tiny order, um, and what's the, what's the lowest price item on the show? Probably your, um, how do you pronounce it again? Lucathoe. I like that. The uh, Lucathoe is eight nine nine. If you just bought that today, then you still get your feed bulls worth £20. So do bear that in mind. We've got some lovely houseplants on the show as well. Or actually, if you're really cheeky, you could buy one lavender for three ninety nine just to get your free gift. But most of you, to be fair, putting together big orders because we've got amazing deals. So try and spend over forty pounds, and you will get free delivery as well. Lots of orders coming in today, and thank you so much. Those hostas have been popular today, Adam. Does it? Right. So you can smell those alliums, can't you? Because um, yeah, they're, they're a member of the onion family, and they've actually got quite an onionly fra onion onion fragrance to them, haven't they? When you're standing there, yeah, like, they have. Yeah. But yeah, it's quite strong, actually. <laughs> it's quite yeah. nice. It's, it's yeah. Awesome. Um, and lots of people asking, when are we live? We are here Wednesdays 10 to 1, Thursdays 10 to 1, and Sunday 10 to 2. We also are partners with QVC, and that's the UK's biggest shopping channel. So if you're wondering where Bex is today, she's getting ready, hair, makeup, all that palaver. Uh, for QVC, she's going to be on QVC style at five o'clock this evening as well, with a totally different selection for QVC as well. It's freebie 37, just to let you know. Right, um, should we move on to the sale? It's Kilmarnock next. Yes, yeah. Kil Kilmarnock Willow. Oh. Isn't that just a knockout little plant? It is. Now, you might be thinking, hang on, guys, I can't have a willow tree in my garden. I don't have the space. But this is a really compact one. It, the, the top's been grafted onto the yep. stem. So actually, it's not going to get much bigger than this. The, the top will get a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger, but, but it's it. overall, it's not going to gain any height to it. No. It's, it. It's almost like a half standard, really, you know, the kind of the height of it. If it was a rose, we'd be calling this sort of a half standard. But I like it because it's got all the attributes of the actual plant, but in this really elegant, small kind of shape. So yeah. even if you're three floors up and you've just got a balcony somewhere, you can still enjoy this. And, it's another one of those, oh, I'm loving the sound of those blackbirds out. I know. That's, that's really lifting the heart. You know, great thing about these as well, these are another one of those plants I remember as a kid. Uh, when I used because even when I was a kid, I hated winter, but I remember my dad used to take us for walks in the winter time, and I can remember um, going for walks with my dad, sort of late winter ish, and seeing all the pussy willow in flower, yeah. all the yellow catkins. Yeah, you know, I remember that too. And that always for me was such a joy because I knew when you, when you see this happening, I knew that spring was coming and you know, all the good times were coming. So it was one of those plants that really, for me, has got a positive uh, kind of effect when I think about it. And you can just see it there hanging down. Look at the way the light also comes through those catkins and kind of al almost sort of lights them up, yeah. really. They are just adorable, aren't they? They're really, really tactile are. as well, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, really tactile. So, so many features on this as well. You, I mean, even when, you know, it's actually dormant, you've got the elegance there, those lovely trailing kind of stems that look just so lovely with the lovely sort of um, shiny dark bark on there. Then the catkins come out, which look magnificent with the yellow stamens as well, which look brilliant. 
then it comes into leaf and it looks really great through the summer. And you can see the yeah, little cat in there just just, just popping open just, just now. I mean, it's little ones at the top yeah. here as well. They're not far off, are they? No, and they just they just feel so lovely as well. So really, and a great plant for kids. I mean, a great plant for kids and also a great plant um, for people uh, that have got sight problems, for example, whether you're, you've, you've got no sight at all, whether you've, you've, you've got a you know, reduced sight. These are really tactile plants. So it's just really lovely to be able to sort of feel these catkins and just a, just a really nice, friendly, gentle, inspiring plant all the way around, uh, to, to be honest. A really, really good plant. And this one, it's got, a, well, I'm going to, if I can get the part off, and I'll probably kind of cheat, but it will have, an, it, it'll have a magnificent root system on there. You've got a lifetime guarantee on this plant as well. And they're like a wet position, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all willows like damp, wet soil, yeah. not dry I mean, soil. You, often, you see them, don't you, by the sides of uh, ponds and... Yeah, um, yeah. I know I had it next to water feature in my last garden, and the water feature was a bit, it used to, in the wind, water would go everywhere, and it loved it there. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the wetter, the damper. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, and... If you've had a lot of flooding this winter, a lot of waterlogging, these sorts of plants will quite happily put up with that waterlogging until the spring. They're, they're not going to perish in really wet conditions. No. And it is, it's, that's what I love about gardening. There is always a plant for every single type of garden position, isn't there? Yeah, there is. There is. There is. It's just finding the right ones. Yeah. And, <laughs> and not putting a plant in the place where it doesn't want to be. If it likes shade, don't put it in full sun. No. In fact, um, there's a, a gardening series. Um, oh, what's it called? The one that they do from Scotland. Um, it's gone out of my head. Not Gardener's World. Beach Grove. And, um, I Beach Grove, seen that. Yeah, it's brilliant. Love it. Beach Grove uh, did an experiment last year where they, they did that on purpose. They purposely planted plants in the very opposite position really? to what it said to put them in. And nearly all of them failed. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, And we do have... if. If you forget some, you know, some of the information that Adam and I have given you, don't forget all the information for every plant is on the YouGarden website as well. It's, our website is brilliant. We're even adding as well little online uh, videos or reels. Uh, so a lot of the favourite plants, if you go on them, you see pictures, and then you'll see a little video of either myself, Bex, uh, Peter. I can imagine Adam will be doing something later on this year, but all of the um, say members of the team here just putting little videos on there with all the product information that you need. Right, I had a question about, do we know which rooting stock this has been grafted onto? Yeah, this would be grafted onto another type of willow. This is probably Salix capria, this actual upright stem or goat willow. So yeah, so it's just been grafted onto another type of willow. Yeah. Sim sim simple as that, yeah. So it will, um, this th this will just behave like a regular willow, but on a yeah, small scale. I mean, this willow it's, scale. it's grafted onto would, is probably the type of willow they harvest to make the sort of wattle fencing or that yeah, kind of thing, yeah. which in yeah. itself would grow into quite a big tree. But because it's been cut off and this type has been grafted onto the top, it'll stay nice and compact. Just one quick thing to tell you, and don't be alarmed if it happens, you might find on occasions you start to see like a big shoot come out the side of the main stem. Yeah, I remember getting that. If you that. see that happen, Take it off, yeah. get rid, get rid straight away. And when the top gets too long, Emma, mind these, these got to a point where they were literally on the ground, just give it a good haircut. Yeah, give it a haircut. And what you'll find is, as the years go by, it will become more and more multi-layered as yes. well. And then uh, as time goes by, just take the ones off underneath, because you'll find underneath eventually, the ones underneath start to die off and disintegrate. So just take them away. And, like, almost like you're giving it a nice little haircut. Clear the, the ones away from underneath, and then you always have the lovely fresh ones on top and the light can get through. Uh, and that is down. And that is down by £10 today at 1499510326. Right, if you're looking for an absolute deal today, we've had a big rush on this one. I, I honestly, I mean, the price isn't wrong because we've checked it. Oh. But I look at that, I look at the size of this, the pot it's in, and that 999 feels really wrong. But so right at the same time. Because yeah. we love a deal. And loads of you going for these. Um, the tell what's your which pot do you like? Which pot do you think this would look best in? Uh, I think it, it, in the little square one. It, yeah. it would look quite nice. Yeah. You, See, well, Adam is a, an award-winning garden designer. I thought I'll, I'll just just check with Adam. But, but that's wait, the one I'd choose. When you pick and actually uh, crush up one of these leaves and smell it, you can actually see how aromatherapy works because when you just inhale that fragrance, oh, that's just you, you just that's really um, oh, yeah. calming, and soothing, isn't it? So, 
That's it's like, really gorgeous, isn't it? It just really, it just almost relaxes you. And you I think, yeah, I always want to do some cooking when I get home. <laughs> yeah, almost. It's lovely. That ready meal can wait. It's really nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, that bay tree, and we went online yesterday, and the prices. I'll be honest. The, the variation in price for this size of, of bay, because it's about 80 centimetres in a 20 centimetres pot, but we could find nothing at 9.99. We read not of this quality and this size. So why we're doing it at this price, I have no and idea. Look at the thickness. If we I turn it around, look at this. I mean, this, this is several years look, old, isn't that's it? That's like a bamboo cane thickness I there. I mean, that is fantastic. And then you've got the lovely red marking of the younger stems at the top, which makes a great contrast with the leaves. Evergreen, white flowers, uh, sort of yellowy whitish flowers, actually, in the spring. Um, and you can leave this to grow into a wild natural shape if you want to, or you can actually turn it into topiary and clip yeah. it into a shape of your, your choice. It's up to you. But what I, what I love about bays is that um, they never let you down. A lot of commercial properties like gyms, salons, spas, they'll have bay trees outside in pots. But, and we used to... You see them at weddings, don't you? You can hire them for weddings. Yeah. They have like a bow or something yeah. in them. And they have the lovely lollipop ones, don't they? Because they look elegant. Yeah, and they, they are just so easy to look after. I know in our, in our last pub, me and my other half have, have got a pub, but in our, we used to have two pubs. And one of them, we weren't there as much. It was managed for us. And we used to put bay trees in the front there because we knew the staff wouldn't bother watering them, looking after them too. Which, I mean, they do need a bit of water, but they're not going to go... No. Uh, and They're very drought tolerant once yeah, they're established. Yeah, so they're not going to have a, a, a big hissy fit and go, you've not watered me, so I'm just going to lose all my leaves. So we had deliberately had bay trees because they were just such low-maintenance plants. Yeah. And even if they weren't looked after, they still maintained uh, a really wonderful level uh, of beauty. They look good all year round. Uh, Price-wise, grab it today. It is down to the best price we've ever done on New Garden TV, 9 99 So at the moment, now, this is why the code is really important. We've put one in our basket, but, but it's saying 14 99 and the postage is 6 99 So at the moment, you're paying 21 98 Let's use the magic code, YGTV0424. Apply it. So suddenly the price has gone down to 9.99, the PMP has gone down. We're now saving 40 quid and we're paying 14.98 and you're going to get 20 pounds worth of spring summer flowering bulbs. So when you think delivered, you're going to get that big bay tree and your bulbs for 14.98. Now if you want to save extra money, just join our club. So Which, would you get that other pound off today in addition to the 14 If you join the club, yeah. Wow, so you get it for 13 90 Yeah. <laughs> and goodness me. And, the, and uh, I know most of you are club members already, but if you're not, as you check out, just add the club membership. It's £5 for the year on auto renewal, and that gives you 10% off all the plants and the compost and loads of other benefits as well. So there's the details. So two different types of membership. Most people go for the green. Normally £20, it's now £5. And basically, your club membership will stay at £5 a year for your life. It will automatically renew at £5 a year for your life unless you cancel. You can cancel at the end of 12 months, that is not a problem. Uh, or £10 is just a one-off year membership that will not renew. And then you'll have to pay whatever the membership price is if you do decide to renew. So most people go for the £5 auto renewal. I think it's about 97, 98% of you. And what that gives is 10% off every plant and accessory. That includes compost. So you'll save nearly £2.50 every time you buy compost. You'll also get 5% off outdoor living and gifts. We do sell lawnmowers, garden equipment, machinery, furniture. So you get an extra discount off those. I know it's not huge, but we work on low margins on things like our furniture, so it's still a great saving. You'll also get £20 worth of new garden vouchers. You can use those throughout the year. And you use one of those every three months, so it's four lots of £5. And also exclusive offers, competitions, and expert advice as well. Love our club. Most of you are members, but if you're a brand new customer, you can become a member 
when you place your first order and get instant savings. Can I just ask a quick question, Sean? Yes. So when you join that, because I don't know, can you do that by direct debit or does it come off a, a, a debit card or? It comes up, so whatever card you're paying for your order. So it could be a credit card or a debit card? Yeah, yeah. Right. Whatever card you're paying brilliant. with today, that just comes off as, uh, as five pounds. Cool, brilliant. So it really is good. So really simple, straightforward. No, yeah. no fiddling about filling direct no. debit forms and all that kind of stuff. We, so. we don't do complicated here at Ugarden. We like to make it easy. And actually, even when you place an order, it's so easy in terms of tracking. You instantly get a confirmation email. Then you'll be told when your order's been picked and packed and when it's on its way and even the day and when it's being delivered and a really good window in terms of the time. So you, everything is tracked. So it's really easy and we've got great customer service. If ever something's not quite right, please let us know. We would want to put it right. Right, time to be unusual, Adam. Yes. So Adam is, is very experienced. But even you, you came into uh, uh, the, the, the potting shed earlier today and you were like, I've never grown that. It was a new that's one on new me. That's new one to you, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. And, and that's not surprising, really, because there's just literally hundreds of thousands of species and varieties and types of plant all over the planet. And, and that is the joy of gardening, mm. is that something new and different always comes along. And also, because the climate's changed in recent years, things we couldn't grow years ago, we can grow now. This, I mean, wow, this is almost like so, so Doctor Who, isn't it? Or, to um, me, it looks like it lives underwater, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. It, it almost looks like one of those... Uh, kind of plants you see in a sci-fi film that might yeah. actually kind of, I don't know, to have a, get you. I'm going to grow this this year because I've got my Mediterranean area. I'm going to grow it in pots. I just want to see it, Adam. Yeah, I, I do. It, it would be, it'd be really interesting it just because you've not grown it before and you just see those, those Can't buds. Wait. I want to see how open. Yeah, I don't even know how, what, what the buds are going to look like. Yeah, I mean, I know it gets about 40 centimetres tall and it does kind of double up as time goes by, so you'll kind of get a bigger and bigger clump oh, as time goes by. And it likes sun, this one, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it likes sun. I think we recommend, ideally, to grow it in a pot as well. We yeah. are saying keep it frost free. Yeah, I have this as a pot grown plant, so enjoy it outside in summer. It sort of die down in, in the winter time and then bring it back out in the spring you know, once the risk of frost has gone. And you'll be able to keep this from year to year to God. year. But I, mean, I wonder, I'm just, I want to see the edges of the flowers because they look so three dimensional, don't they? I mean, just, just it's like look, coral, isn't it? I mean, it? look how much interest there is in that flower there, isn't it? I mean, yeah. if, if that flower didn't exist, uh, you know, and somebody showed you that, you'd say, well, that's a made up flower. That, that, that could never exist in real life. I mean, can you ever imagine if aliens ever do make it to planet Earth and they, they, they see the variety of our plants? They're going to be blown away, aren't yeah, they? they? Are. It's, it's just exquisite, the kind of crazy, crazy plants we have. That is just so, extraordinary. I know you've got lots of Mediterranean plants in your garden. Is that the side you'd put it on, Adam, presumably? Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, you've, got your south, you've got your south facing Mediterranean. Yeah, area. yeah, that would go the south facing. In fact, I'm going to try some of those this year. I'm going to give those ago yeah. I, I might even sneak one of those little uh, packs home with me because it's it's all in um well, you know, it's, it's, well yes we'll say that adam doing some research research that's gonna say it's all for yes. research indeed i can't wait to grow them and they've been really popular actually we only launched these in the last uh, week and they've been incredibly popular so you can either go for three corms for 9.99 or you can double up so adam i don't want to get too technical but for anyone that's never grown a corn, but they think, well, I've grown bulbs, but it's a corn. Yeah, basically... It's, there's not... In terms of planting, it's not that different, is it? Yeah, but, but a bulb is... Uh is it like an onion shape yeah, it's thing? So it's got layers, layers yeah. yeah. And and it and it produces bulbits around the base, and the flower comes from the bulb each year. With with a corm, what happens is the corm is each year as it flowers, it discards the old corm and it creates a new one underneath it that will be the flower for next year. So the same bulb will keep flowering year after year, but it's a new corm that produces the flower year after year. And if you look at um, things, for example, like, um, oh, what's the, the thing called Lucifer, Crocosmia? Yes, we've got If you ever dig up a clump of Crocosmia, you'll see all these little bulbs in a long line, all, all attached to one another. Yeah, yeah. And the one at yeah. the bottom is the old corm, and the one at the top is the newest. So that's the difference. Yeah. I've got cocos in my garden. Love yeah. them. Love yeah, them. they are. They yeah. So there you go. So I think I saw. I think we've got even those coming up. So I, I saw a picture card earlier on for one of those. So I think. That, oh right, there you go. Come in. Come in on Sunday. Yes, but these are available right now. Um, all the plant instructions. It gets to we say forty centimeters. Yeah, uh, and start them off in the warm as well. Start definitely. them off indoors with a little bit of heat. Uh, you, you don't have to start them off right now. I mean, they'll be quite happy left dormant for a while. And a good thing to do with anything like these bulbs like this that have been um, dried for a little while is I would soak them in, in sort of water overnight just before you're going to plant would you? them. Yeah. yeah, just to get them hydrated. So just, just in, 
a little bit of lukewarm water, just on the worktop in the kitchen or somewhere. Good idea. Just leave them overnight. The way, that way the bulb will, will kind of absorb the water overnight. It will swell the bulb a little bit. And when you put it in the compost, they'll grow away that much more yeah, quickly. Yeah, I was going to say it gets off to a better, yeah. quicker start, doesn't only, it? Only overnight, not yeah. longer than that. So, try something new. Go for those today. While we've got the stocks there, so they've been selling really quickly. Three comms for 9 tonight. Or I, I doubled up and six for 12 98 Planted that's about two to three inches. So you're growing these? Yeah. All right. Well, I'm definitely going to get some then, so we'll have a little competition. Yeah, it'll be great. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there we go. See how we go. We like that. Right, going to move on to the peony collection. Right, I've just had a, I have just had a flashback, Adam. So we were, I remember us being at an exhibition together years ago. Oh, yes. And you actually left with a white peony. Do you remember that? I do, yeah. Do yeah. you? Oh, well, what was BBC, that peony it was called? A, it was the BBC... Um, That's in my old garden. I left it in my old garden. Did you? Yeah, yeah. It was their, their show. We, did, we had a stand together. We did. And I do, I remember you, because you could yes. buy the plants at the end of it, and I do, I remember you buying this big white peony. Yeah, and I you do were so remember excited. That yeah. And now, you said you'd never had a white peony now, before. What was it? Was it, it wasn't Shirley Temple, because I think that's a red one. No, I can't remember, no, I can't. but I do, but I, I do just, sorry, I, did, I just had a flashback. I, thought, I do yeah. remember it. So anyway, and I remember thinking, oh, I should have bought that one. Right, white, red, and pink in this collection, but if you double up, in fact, you don't need to double up, we're going to do it for you. It's a buy one, get one free. So you're going to get six for twelve ninety nine. Now, for many years, Adam, when I grew up, I just I only ever remember pink peonies. Was it just where I lived? Or? Pink or red? That's always remember. That's as a kid. I, remember. I don't yeah. remember the white. I mean, they actually come in yellow as well. You can get yellow ones now, and you, know, you can get bicoloured ones and all sorts. Well, we've got the bowl of beauty on our website, which is pink and yellow. Yeah, uh, but we've got three lovely colours here, haven't you? Yeah, peonies. Again, a magnificent plant as well. Fragrant, and they actually have fragrance yes, peonies, which is incredible. Make great cut flowers if you want to take them indoors and have them in a vase. Really tough, come up year after year after year. Sometimes, eventually, you can get five or six stems of peonies, perhaps with 12, 15, 20 flower buds on each stem. So they're not that short flowering, really, because you know they keep going. Sort of one lot of flower will go deadhead it, the next bud opens up, and so on. A, a little tip for peonies as well. Never, ever, ever plant peonies deep. Only plant them very, very shallow. If you plant them deep, they won't flower. They hate being planted deep. So just under the surface and they'll flower. Full sun, dappled shade, not dark shade, but full sun to, to dappled shade. And they'll come up for you year after year after year. Might need a little bit of support just to support them. But other than that, just such yeah. reliable plants. That's a really good tip about planting them too deeply. I've forgotten that. Yeah, yeah, they hate being. Yeah. Because um, you know, there's that thing about they say move move a pin, it won't flower for seven years. That, that, that's 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 gobbledygook. That's, is it really? Because yeah. I've, I've, you see, I have moved them and had that problem. But is it because then I planted them too deeply? That's like? exactly what happens. People ah. dig them up and then they, they don't realise how shallow they are to start with and they put them in too deep a hole. Yeah, and it's natural, because if you see the kind of the peony roots, I think they even have rhizomes, and you think, oh, yeah, I need to make sure these big fleshy roots are quite nice deep down in the soil. So that's your natural way to plant them. And then the plants like, I hate this. I don't want to be deep. Yeah. I don't want to be deep planted. And they, they, they won't flower. And so they let you know. They let you know. They? So plant them really nice and shallow and um, they'll, they'll flower for Now you. these are our bare roots. Ready to plant right now. Again, I always give but any bare root, generally speaking, I give it a good drink first. Yeah, of give all. it a good soak. Um, but we often get asked, will they flower in the first year? And we can't I, guarantee that. I wouldn't no, say. no, no. I'd be a liar if I said they're definitely going to flower for you this year. You might be lucky and they'll flower this year. Probably not. But next year, the year yeah. after, and so on, they will start flowering. But you will. I mean, the value. I'm not being funny. We could. Again, show your peony in a pot in summer. Quid. Yeah, yeah, easily. Yeah, fifteen pound. For and these are these are working out just over two pounds each today on New Garden TV. Oh, actually, now you say that, I remember um, when we worked when we worked previously, we sold some uh, tree peonies bare root. Yeah, I remember those. Yeah, and I remember we had some left over, and I planted them in the garden where we used to work, and they did flower. The following year, they were yellow ones, and some did flower. That some didn't, some did. So you may, but we can't guarantee it. But at that price, even if you just yeah. established them the first year, amazing. And actually, the foliage and pin is really nice yeah, as I love, well. Yeah, they, they look great even when they're finished flowering. Uh, Twelve ninety nine five eighty zero zero four. It's a buy one get one free. Now we're going to move on to one of. My favourite flower is my mum's absolute favourite flower. In fact, she's got some there in a vase right now. Freesias. 
double up deal again. So you get 100 for 9.99, or if you want to go for 200, you've got them for 14.98. And it's a mixture of singles and doubles. Let's just talk about freesias as a flower because they are so beautiful. They love. I mean, their fragrance is amazing, isn't it? <laughs> One word sums up uh, freesias, superb, really. Yes. They are just superb plants. Fragrance, just a fragrance. I mean, I, I had a bunch. Um, I bought some the other day, yellow and red ones in a vase. And even though they're in the kitchen, I could smell them in the living room. Yeah. And it's the a fragrance. Is, and it's is a so lovely delicious. It's, but it's not over... Powering. No, it's not no. heavy, I should say. It's not heavy, is no, it? No, no. It's just it's a lovely spicy kind of... Oh, it's, yeah. And, and it's the, often used in, in candles and um, oils and things like that. But, Adam, these freesias, because I know sometimes you may have tried to grow freesias and they haven't flowered in the first year. Ours have actually been heat treated, haven't they? Yeah, these will flower this year. And also, they will come up year after year, uh, freesias. They will keep flowering. Um, they, they don't just die off. I mean, I've got some in a trough in my garden that I put in two or three years ago, and they're still, some are still coming up. Really? In fact, some are putting up leaves now, which is a bit bizarre, a bit early. But magnificent colour, incredible, incredible range of colours with freesias, magnificent fragrance, fabulous cut flowers yeah. that last for a long, long time. Um, the bees and the pollinating insects absolutely adore them. Great for pots, troughs, um, anywhere sunny and well drained. Just such an elegant, gorgeous, yeah. wonderful, lovely uh, bulb. And, and, and fabulous. And in terms of, of hardiness, well, again, it depends on where they are, where yeah, you live. Yeah, as I say, well, I've, I've, mine, mine have gone through you know, a couple of two or three years. I mean, admittedly, I've got mine in a trough, so they're raised up and they're against a self facing wall. Right, yeah, yeah. So, so do bear that in mind, because they are on the tender side, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, so I mean, if you're going to put them in quite a heavy, cold soil, they, you know, they might flower this year, but chances are next winter they'll just rot in the ground. They won't get through. What I've done uh, with some others, I, I planted some others in some pots last year, and I've been protecting the pots through the winter, and then I'm going to bring them back out again in the spring, and I'm really hopeful that they're going to, yeah. they're going to flower again. And actually, if you double up, you've got 200 as well. So... Masses of flowers. It always amazing how expensive freesias are. I mean, you buy a little bunch, don't you? And there's like five stems. And yeah, but they are just dead five easy pounds, to seven grow. Five pound. You, you plant them, and they will. I'll guarantee you, they will flower for you this year. Yeah. They really will and flower. And they don't just have one stem. No. Sometimes they have three or four stems coming out from one bulb at different times. So you get a long flowering period on these as well. They're not like a say a daffodil where you've got one stalk and a flower and that's it. These will send out four or five stems, and each stem sometimes has got little branches on it with more buds. Yeah. So. And the, and the flowering period is actually quite long. Even yeah. there's a cut flower several weeks sometimes. I've had them. I've had them in the vase for three weeks before. Yeah, because so. you know when you buy them and, and you've got the initial flower on the top of you, but then you have those little side branches. Yeah. And if you just keep cutting the bottoms off and change the water, they, they will flower right to the very end, won't yeah. they? So they make a really I good think, cut flower. I, again, we'd love you to try the freesias. They have been heat treated, that special process that really would enable them to flower this year. And it works out, uh, if you double up, it's about 750 for 100 freesias, it works out. <laughs> so what's yeah. that per freesia? Can we seven, work? Seven and a half P. Can we, oh, is it, oh yeah. Yeah. Well, should have worked that out, shouldn't I, really? Yeah, really good. Bad maths. That's why I did GCA, GCSE. <laughs> my, my, my maths is hot today. Right, we're going to move on now because we have got Gladi Oli up next. And this one is a buy one, get one free. So you're actually going to get 200 bulbs for £14.98. pence. Um, amazing value. Have you worked out the price per bulb on this one? I don't go on. Uh, 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 100, 100, there, there you go. Seven and a half pence. Yay! Well, well done. Somebody said it in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> right, so yeah, amazing. Now, um, Gladio, like fantastic cut flower, but these are great for the back of the border, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, back of the border, middle of the border. And because buy one, get one free, what I would do, personally myself, is I'd have some in the garden to enjoy. And then the other packet I might grow down the other end of the garden on my allotment in the kitchen garden, just in a long straight row, and have them for cut flowers, flowers yeah. later in the year. And another thing you can do with these as well, gladioli, if you're going to plant them in the garden, what I would do is plant, say, 50% of them. In fact, you could even segregate out more than that. You could plant some one week, leave it a couple of weeks, plant a few more, leave it a couple of weeks, plant the remainder, and that way you'll stagger the flowering period like as well. That, yeah. So you can get them to flower at different times. Because they are bulbs and they're dormant, 
they're going to be happy if they're not planted all at the same time. And then you'll get this colour mix and this range of flowers over a much greater period. But, oh, gladioli. Gladioli are a little bit like freesias in that they're almost in every colour apart mm. from, and in fact, these are in every colour as well dark or black looking one there as well so yeah I mean everything but bright blue to be honest the, the range of colors there the pollinate, pollinating insects love them and simple simple to grow plant them about two or three inches deep plant them somewhere sunny and well drained with quite a hearty soil in fact it's, it's well worth digging in some compost or something before you plant them and you'll see within four or five weeks just little sort of little spear of, of foliage coming through that will grow and grow and grow and don't panic if you don't see the flower bud for quite a long time because quite often the leaves will get yeah, about so, so tall right. and, then... and you think oh these are going to be blind as they call it they're not going to flower but then suddenly at the yeah. top you'll see this little kind of swelling at the top of the leaves and the bud will start to push through and these flower for you about probably late July, August, right into September, yeah. late summer. It's a good point though. I remember I've grown gladiolo before in my last garden. I, many times I've thought, oh, they're not going to flower this year, but they do. I and the you faith. can really plant them close together as well because they're tall and thin. They are, yeah, yeah. And they always remind me uh, Barry Humphreys and sadly he's no longer with us, but yeah. Oh, always think of him when I see uh, yes, Gladiolos. As, uh, as, as obviously Magnificent Dave, character Dave he was. I actually saw him in, Con I saw one of his last tours as himself about... From, was it about three years ago, two years ago? Yeah, it was a very funny man. I, I remember as a kid, uh, I was only about seven or eight at the time, my mum and dad had gone out for the evening and um, I think I was at home. And I remember seeing Barry Humphreys on the telly and um, I'd never seen, it was Damien Neverage, never yeah. seen her before. And when my mum and dad come up and they told me it was, it was a man, I would not believe them. I just would, I said, no, that's definitely, definitely a female. It's def no, son, it's a man. But yeah, it's so convincing. He yeah, is such a funny man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Should have um, got him to do shopping telly, he'd been hilarious. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, if you like your uh, Gladio like that, 6.30, Right, uh, Adam Wilcott is with us today. Massive wealth of knowledge that he'd love to share with you. I had a question about the freezers, actually. Uh, who was this by? Alwyn! Hello, Alwyn. Uh, can you grow them in window boxes? That sounds a great idea. They me. are magnificent mm. for window boxes. Absolutely yeah. perfect, because they're only going to get about 12 inches or so tall, 12, 15 inches tall. Fantastic. You could even, if you wanted to, you've got a large hanging basket, you could even put in the middle of a hanging basket. Ooh, that'd be They'd nice. do well in that as well. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so thank you, Alwyn, for that. Right, uh, Agapanthus are uh, next. I nearly started singing, and I could do that, I don't know why. Uh, right, so uh, five beverages, we're actually doing a double up. So it's a buy one, get one free. You're going to get 10 of these for 9 99 working out £1 each. And these are actually bare roots, so again, amazing value. And out of all the agapanthus, and we've got several varieties on our website, this is the, one of the largest, isn't it? Yeah, this is really, really tall, these explosive heads of flower. I mean, you've got a stem with, what, perhaps 50, 100 individual flowers on the top of each stem. Wow. And they don't all come out at once, which is great as well. So they come out a little bit of a time. And th these will flower for many, many weeks. There's a, a white variety there as well. Gorgeous strap-shaped leaves as well, and these really tall, elegant stems. Again, make great cut flowers if you want to cut some yeah. and take them indoors. They're actually, if you buy them as a cut flower, they're really expensive, aren't they? Yeah, but they last a long, long time. And they are the sort of plant that will take punishment. If you're going to grow them in a pot, they love to be pot-bound. So don't give them tons of space. Just keep them really, really pot-bound, and that will keep them flowering year after year after year. The only uh, thing to say about Africanus is, is they're not totally and utterly root-hardy in really, really cold winter. So um, if you've got a self-facing wall, if you plant the base of a, base of a self-facing wall or in, in a warmer part of the country, really well-drained soil, it might be fine. If you're in a colder pl place, grow them in a pot. Grow them in a pot with some really good quality compost. And but good drainage. Good drainage, but not too big a pot. You want to constrain them. They'll flower their socks off for you. And then in the winter time, just put them somewhere. It doesn't have to be warm, just barely frost free. Uh, and then leave them there for the winter, bring see, them out again in the spring. See, and I put a lot fine. of things in my garage, Adam. Absolutely fine for those in the garage. Yeah. I mean, you might get away with them in the ground. If we have a really mild winter, they could be fine. But if, you know, these days we just don't know, do we? Because the weather can be so freaky. It's like you said a uh, year before last, 40 degrees in the summer, then we were down to minus 12s in some places, minus so, 18 so you in the think winter. That, that's a 50 degree difference from yeah. the high to the low. Yeah. 
big range. So enjoy these. They're really worth the extra effort. If you're down on the south coast, down in the southwest, somewhere like that, yeah, you could probably get away with them in the ground, but somewhere colder, grow them in a pot. To grow something this color as well is worth the mm. extra effort because blue is one of the least popular or least available colors in the plant kingdom for us in this country. There's not many things that are really true no, blue. You're right, there's so many like more this. yellows and pinks and reds and whites. Yeah. But um, blue, you know, to get this magnificent blue color is spectacular. And you, you see down in the channel lines and stuff, they, is it the Guernsey or Jersey Lee, they grow wild down there all, yeah. all over the place. Uh, no, again, we're not going to promise flowers in the first year. They'll need to get established. Yeah, get a little from bit year established. Two onwards. Yeah, from year two onwards, I definitely think these will flower for you. But really, really tough, really vigorous plants. You, you'll see these big bunch of strap-like leaves come up, and then all of a sudden, you'll see this oval bud start to push up on a really thick stem, and that bud grows quite quickly, and then it splits open at the top, and over yeah. a course of weeks, just this firework explosion of blue buds and flowers. Well, uh, can we say thank you to everyone that's messaging in and watching. Um, oh, just quickly, by the way, massive price reduction, don't forget, on the bay tree today. So um, there's a Lager Panthers, 10 beverages, so it's a uh, buy five, get five free for just nine pounds and 99 pence. And the Bay Jill, just really quickly, because obviously at this price, they are going very quickly, 9.99, really well established. This is the size you get, eight centimeters, big 20 centimeter pot, 9.99. Unbelievable. Try and find a better deal on the website, uh, on the internet, I should say. Such a healthy plant. It's amazing. Look at it. It's so vigorous. Um, and we do think, Adam and I have agreed, out of all the pots we've got on the show, we think it looks great in the brand new April pots. So these uh, have been selected by a head gardener. You get two for less than £25 and posters included. So actually, if you bought the pots and two bays, you get it all delivered free of charge and two pots, two bays, what's that, about 44.96, something like that. Then, what? So actually, right, yeah, 22.50 basically for that. And then all you get the bulbs. And then you're gonna get 20 pounds worth of bulbs as well. And that planted up, and you gotta bear in mind, it'll be that kind of height, planted up, that'd look amazing. The only other thing you'd need and you wouldn't need a lot of it, but you would need some compost. And we have got our premium professional compost at 24.98. Now, um, we often mention our head gardener here at Garden, Peter McDermott. We've both known Peter for many years, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. A uh, great man, very knowledgeable as well. Yeah, the, I'm just thinking we ought to do some uh, some gardening quizzes together at some point. Who do you think? Who would win? Do you think that? I think it'd get very competitive, don't you? I, I would like to say I'm very very competitive actually. So yeah, I think yeah. If we did it as teams, I think yeah, we'd have to have Peter and you on separate teams. Bex yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah be a bit biased if uh, yeah Peter and I are on the same yeah. team. I think I wouldn't be fair with yeah. it really. Anyway, um, here's Peter to talk through his favourite product here at Ugarda, which is, of course, the Premium Professional Compost. We describe this as Premium Professional Compost. And the reason for that is it is the compost that is known, this formula, we have perfected over decades. So I've been using it for decades. We have perfected it over decades. You've got a blend of the best peats plus wood fibre that you can imagine. Now, by volume, approximately 50% of this compost is wood fibre and the balance is made up of a blend of peats and there are three different peats. So you've got things like sphagnum moss peat, which is renewable, you've got sedge peat and, and then you've got darker sphagnum as well in there. So you've got three different peats. You've also got, you can see actually just there, they're slow release fertiliser. These little green, what look like little eggs, you'll see those dotted among the compost when you're planting it. That's slow release fertiliser. One of the most expensive ingredients in any compost is fertiliser. You can see that there's another one just down below. Um, that is amazing because that will deploy nutrients to the roots of whatever you grow in this compost just when they need it over the next six months. You then got what's called a buffer. Now, 
Peat in particular is naturally acidic. So, and plants like to be just on the acidic side of neutral as a generality. There are exceptions, so things like rhododendrons and azaleas, they love to be properly um, acidic in terms of the, the, the ericaceous soil or compost they're growing in. But most things like it just on the slightly acidic edge of, of neutral. So um, that's what this is designed to give you. So it's got a pH buffer to keep it in exactly that zone. The wood fiber keeps the sort of perfect air water porosity ratio which is what we talk about in the trade, all these complicated terms. But, but, but it's, what plants need is they need, they, need, they need a jungle gym to grow in. So they need a jungle gym for their roots, which is called growing medium. They need some water and they need some air and they need nutrients. And, and when you've got the perfect compost, it blends the air and the water and the constituents of the compost. It all blends together to give the perfect environment. That's what this particular compost does, which is why it's trusted by us. We will be growing approximately 150,000 potted roses on this nursery this year. That's roughly what we grow most years. We'll be growing, I don't know how many hanging baskets, but our pre-planted hanging baskets that will be available later, you will have bought them in the autumn and last spring as well. They grow in this compost. We will grow countless perennials, whether they be in the nine centimetre square pots or the three litre pots or the five litre pots, plus fruit trees. And this is the compost we oh. use for all of those things. So we trust it, the trade trusts it. And actually based upon the, the well, literally hundreds and hundreds of thousands of, of bags of this particular compost that you've bought over the years, you definitely trust it as well. And, um, you know, and, and, and actually Pete, is a, is a thing. We need to think about peat. Not me. I, I happen to also be peat, but it's yes, the peat that's in here that we're, that we're talking about. Um, we can still use peat in our gardens right now, and actually the alternatives, generally speaking, are a bit iffy. So if you want to get the best results, in my view, use this particular compost for as long as you can. It's got 50% other material in it, which is the lowest level we could get to and still have a professional quality product for you and for ourselves. So we've been as eco-friendly as we can. And we jumped onto that particular, mm. uh, that approach years and years and years ago. So this is the same formulation that we've had for at least the last six or seven years with 50% um, other material to bulk out the peat. And it worked, it still works better. So I would say this is, in my yeah. opinion, it's the only compost I use at home. It's the compost we use on the nursery. I can't recommend it highly enough. Oh, that's our head gardener, the wonderful Peter McDermott. Right, still got lots of you uh, watching and joining us. Thank you. Just read some of the comments on uh, my Facebook as well. Thank you so much. So just quickly, if you joined us in the last half an hour and you're thinking, what's that offer code? Who are these two? What's happening? Well, first of all, uh, the offer code unlocks all of the promotions. So sometimes you put together a basket and you think, hang on, the prices are higher than we've said, that special code will unlock all the promotion. So it may reduce the price, it may give you a free one, it may take off the postage. So always put the code in. It will give you a free gift as well, Adam, won't it? It will, which is these beauties here, Sean. So a magnificent Ooh, yes. selection of bulbs there, all different types of bulbs, which are gonna flower really from probably late February all the way through to late May, early June. So, and still, honestly, we've just opened them up. Still lots of time to plant those, but they're worth 20 pounds. And that's free with every order. So even if you placed an order an hour ago, and now you've watched and thought, hang on, I want those freesias. I like, uh, I really like this Agapanthus, whatever. It's one per order, not one per customer. Maybe you just decide you want some of the pots or whatever. So do bear that in mind. Even if you place two or three orders, you'll get two or three free gifts. Also, if you spend over 40 pounds and use that code, you get free delivery. And we do our real, we do try really hard to make our delivery as affordable as possible, but you have to bear in mind, the technology that we've invested in, in our packaging, is really considerable. We, you know, Peter and the team, they've spent years developing the right packaging for every type of plant. So the plants are all really, the big ones are really well strapped in, all of the packaging is 100% recyclable, and it's designed to make sure your plants arrive in perfect condition. So we, we, we can't just say, oh, we'll give you free postage and everything, but we will say if you spend over 40 pounds, we'll give you the whole order uh, delivered for free, which is brilliant actually. That's, mag it? that's magnificent, really. Yeah, if your order isn't 40 pounds, you'll only ever pay one postage charge, whichever one is the highest. So say if you've got, 
three items in your basket. One's four nine to nine postage. One's five nine to nine. One's six nine to nine. You'd only pay the six nine to nine for the whole order. And if you become a club member, you get ten percent off all your plants that you're ordering today and your compost. Uh, in fact, actually, the most expensive item we've shown you today is four nine to nine postage. So that's probably going to be the maximum you pay today. Right. Going to go back to some of your favourites. Luca Thoey. <laughs> Luca Thoey. Yeah. Well, Luca Thoey. I mean, different people say it different ways, don't yeah. they? I mean, I saw one guy once on telly called a, a Garvey's A Gaves. Oh, that's thought, a new I, one. I thought, that's, I thought that's stretching it. I, I, I do honest. sometimes worry about pronunciation because I, I, I've gardened all my life, but I've always just known the, the, the common names. So I don't know the latter names. Some people in my garden club, they, I'll, I, They'll sort of go. Well, that's, that's why we had the Latin names because whether you're here or in Peru, or the other side of Siberia, it's the same. Yeah. Whereas local names change. I mean, bluebells in Scotland aren't the same as what we call bluebells in England. So that's why we have, that's why we have the scientific name. Yeah. But um, do you know, I with my garden club that I run, I try and get rid of any kind of snobbery with with gardening. It's kind of. The, it, we, um, we just believe gardening's for everybody, and actually that is the tagline with you garden, it is gardening for everyone, and it is, and we all, none of us know everything, do we? No, no, it, this gardening is such a mind-blowingly vast topic, only, only somebody can be an expert in one, one area. Yeah, yeah, I mean, very true. You take any, I mean, like we, we've got peonies on the show. There's a guy at the Chelsea Flower Show wins gold medals every year on peonies, and yeah. and he'll tell you everything in the world there is to know about peonies. But you know, it's probably taken him a lifetime of just course. to get to that on peonies so, alone. And there's hundreds of thousands of varieties of plants across the planet, so it's it's a huge subject. So never be shy asking questions, will you? Ne anything you want to know, never be shy, and. Because people do get intimidated, don't they, by yeah. gardening? I, I find that with, you know, I go and see people and they, they say, oh, oh, I don't want to ask you that because, you know, it's embarrassing because you're an excellent. So, no, 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 don't, don't think like that. Don't, don't, be, you know, don't be embarrassed. Don't be intimidated. You know, just ask. Just yeah. say. Don't, sometimes people want to tell you things or show you things and they think you're going to think it's silly. No, I'm not going to think it's silly. We're, we're not going to think it's silly. It's, it's, it's good. I mean, if you've got any brilliant ideas out in your gardens, things that you're doing to grow things in or different ways of growing, tell us, let yeah. us know. Share. We'd love to know. Share with us. I mean, I've picked up definitely a few things from you today, Adam. The, the daily ones stood out. And I've picked them up from other people. Yeah. Throughout, you know, oh, people do say Dahlia sometimes. Yeah. That's uh, just in my ear. So he said Dahlia. But yeah, that lovely Stuart said Dahlias. People do say Dahlias. Some people say Clematis, some people say Clematis. Yes. So. So anyway, we're going to move on to uh, the Lakothi, the oh. Lukatho, <laughs> yeah. the Lukathoe, uh, which uh, let's just, oh, we could just say burning love. Well, we could call it a Lukot ho, couldn't we? Yeah, we, oh God, here we go. <laughs> uh, five to one, zero, five, eight. Whatever you call it, you are going to be delighted with it because just look at that foliage. By any other name, it's still a gorgeous yeah. plant, isn't it? So, let's face it. Grossed about quite compact, what, 70 centimetres ish? Yeah, yeah, a, 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 quite a slowish growing plant, yeah. a compact plant. Now, you think this plant has been outside, we're in the third week of January, how magnificent does yeah. that look? I'll tell you what, if I'd been outside for a whole year and it was the third week of January, we'd look like death, wouldn't we? But look, this I just know. looks phenomenal. So, I mean, look at the lovely, lovely bronzy red foliage on the top there, then the evergreen foliage further down. This is the worst this plant is going to look. Um, it likes sort of dappled um, dappled sun. Um, it will grow shade to dappled shade. I wouldn't put it in full on full sun. It likes an acid soil. So if in your garden at home already, you're looking out your window and you've got rhododendrons, azaleas, camellias, all growing really happily, you could put it straight into your soil. But if you struggle with those sort of plants, put it in a pot and use some of their acacious compost. That way it will be happy, it will thrive. They do flower eventually as well. They have these kind of little um, heads of flowers, like little bells kind of hanging down on the they're flowers. Actually, they are, and they are quite attractive, yeah, they aren't are. they? Yeah. yeah. So, but, and it's a great plant as well this time of year, if you've got it in a pot, to have some lovely spring flowering bulbs around the base yeah. of it, snowdrops, crocuses. Oh, that look amazing. Some little miniature it? daffodils, things like that, or some lovely red tulips, little miniature red tulips. And actually with your free bulbs that you're getting, you could plant some of those there, you could you? Yeah, those are Nenemi Blanda. They look, they'd look uh, nice. They look lovely yeah. just at the base of that, sort of flowering away with this. Um, 
And if you've got it in a pot, of course, this time of year when everything's so bare and dull and miserable, you can bring it right up onto the patio, bring it near the house. I mean, why not have a couple and have them either side, for example, or either side of, of a, a set of steps or a doorway or, or a path or somewhere? Well, it's, um, it's going so quickly. It's only 8 99 so you've got a big price reduction. Uh, go for two, we're having them in pots. And I just love the fact that it looks good all year round. Yeah, it, it I mean, really does. It is one of these plants that's you know it's multifaceted. Yeah. It's, you know, it's got so many kind of attributes. Really, the fact that it's you know it's evergreen, it's colourful, it flowers. It's just a, a great all round. And it's easy. And it's easy. Yeah, yeah. We've got hundreds of these on the nursery right now, and they all look good. Doesn't need pruning. No. Don't need to prune it. Just the only the only uh, other thing to let you know is, and it's not a worry. You might find, well, you will find a little later in the season. All of a sudden, it will start to drop a number of leaves. Don't panic about that because all evergreens, at least once a year, they drop their older leaves as they start to produce newer yeah. leaves. So don't think it's stressed or something wrong with it. It's just literally doing what it naturally wants yeah. to do, shedding the older leaves as new ones come. Um, Adam advised me on one of my hedges, which is, um, God, I can't think of the name of it now. Oh, Anyway, it'll come back to me. but. It, it, it looked really good. It does look really good, but it's evergreen. And you're right, it's only started to drop lots of leaves. I wasn't one of the so the red rubbing. No. But a lot, I mean, all evergreen. Anyway, but you're right. Yeah, so all, they all start to lose leaves. It's like, oh, but it's just a new growth coming through. Yeah, new growth coming through. They all uh, do that. Yeah, yeah. so uh, do not panic with that one. Um, right, the host collection going absolutely crazy today. Buy five, get five, absolutely free, working at a pound each. And you can buy, you know, if you buy a hosta when it's in a pot, looking great in, in spring, early summer, you can spend easily 9.99 for one. Easily, yeah, can't you? Yeah. These are working out one pound each. And the great thing is, even as a bare root, you're gonna get a really nice display this year, aren't you? You will, yeah. And the great thing about hostas is such a diverse range. You can get hostas that, some hostas you can get that only one and a half, two inches across, super, you can get ones that have got leaves the size of elephant's ears, literally. But these are just a spectacular mix. And the great thing about this, not, I mean, they do flower and the flowers are nice, but even without the flower, look at the contrast in leaf color. You've got silvers, you've got golds, you've got yellows, yeah. you've got greens, you've got lime greens. You've got such a spectacular range of colours there. A great for that shady area, great for that damp area, great for those places where other things might struggle. Uh, now, the only thing with hostas, and you may know this already if you've ever grown them and not had success, slugs do love them. I mean, this is like, <coughs> yeah, out of all the plants that we've got on the show, if the slugs had their choice... <laughs> So there is a solution, there are many solutions actually, but the one that we recommend, which is organic, does it involve killing the slugs? Made in the UK. Made in the UK. It is our straw. Now, it is a brilliant deterrent for slugs and snails, but it also helps reduce weeds. It helps structure of the soil. So uh, once it's done its job, you can dig that in. It will help the structure. It also is great in terms of retaining moisture. So in the summertime, if you've got a layer of strosh, it can, any plants that need to keep moist, it can help with that as well, can't it? Yeah, it, it does, keeps the weeds at bay, keeps the moisture. And also it's great this time of year because if you've got a really heavy, sticky soil, you can walk between your plants that's and a, all the mud yeah, doesn't stick to your boots. You're not good treading point. the mud everywhere. And if you get really heavy rain as well, it doesn't splash the soil onto your patio and your paths and things. So it's, it's, it's a multifaceted product, really. Yeah. And, um, Slugs hate it. Two big bags delivered free, 3697, uh, 149 is your item. Uh, right, the bay tree, you're loving that. It is only £9.99 today. Uh, right, I had a question. Could you turn it into a standard? I'm now, gonna, I would say not on that one. You could, but you'd have to be quite brutal. Yeah. If, you, if you wanted to train to a stand, you'd have to select just one of the stems. You'd have to take off those two side ones, wouldn't and you? And remove the other two. And, and then you could train the final one into a standard. You what, could. What you could do is it and that's a message. You could you could train it into a shape, but not a standard, couldn't you? Yeah, you could train it into a shape. Um, 
if you did change the stand, you'd say be, you'd, you'd lose two thirds of the plants, yeah. which would be sad. But um, but yeah, you can do it if you want to. But if not, you could train it into a shape, or you could uh, train it into a triple stand if you wanted to. <laughs> with like oh. kind of almost like that um, cloud prune that they do in Japan. You know, those cloud pruned kind of trees. You, you you could try that if you. In fact, what you could do. Go on, if I, I just Jay, walk, he wants to get his hands on it. Go on, I'll let you, go on. You've you, you've got um, three main stems here, so you could take these these little smaller ones away. And then the three remaining stems, you could you could make them three different heights. So that one there, that one there, and that one more or less as it is. So you've got three different height stems. Take all the lower bits off, so you've got a bit, and then leave the bits on the top, and you could ball shape each one of those as time goes by. And then you'd have three ball shapes on three separate stems. Oh, nice and Adam. that would almost look like that sort of Japanese cloud pruning. You might need a year or so to do it, but you could do it. That's why Adam has got four gold medals <laughs> at Chelsea. See, I'd have never seen that on that. I'm like, nah, you can't. But yeah, yeah I like you could. that. That could work. Give it a go, Anne. It's only 9 9 to 9. Give it a go. Yeah, time Do you and know patience. What? That's all it if needs. If all f else failed, you could just let it grow back into a bush, couldn't you? You could, yeah. No harm done, because anything that's pruned back, it'll regrow. Yeah. So, yeah. Right, uh, love this one. This is going in my basket today. It is the Dahlia, or Dahlia, uh, Blackberry <laughs> Ripple. Uh, Richard, 997. Just Adam. <laughs> for three on, uh, 1498 for six. Um, it's an absolute showstopper of a day. This is a showstopper. Sort of I mean, that is just magnificent. I mean, it's, an, it's, it's like a firework explosion, isn't it, in a yeah. plant? I mean, these huge, great big flowers, that mottled foliage, uh, mottled uh, flower um, petals there, incredibly healthy foliage, very upright plants, a real statement piece, this flowering from late June, July, August, September, right up until the frosts. If you want to have these as cut flowers, wait till they've just opened out before you cut them. Cut them in tight bud. They don't open up in a vase but wow I mean this is going to be a talking point and, and when this starts flowering friends family people come past they're going to say to you where did you get that what is this I mean it's just absolutely yeah. stunning well you bought it here at you garden TV don't just go for three double up and you go for six for 14.98 um Great to grow those in pots, of course, as well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, a big pot, go in a big pot, because this is gonna be quite a big, chunky plant. You might just need a little bit of staking later in the year, but other than that, really easy to grow. Um, plant yeah. them, and um, dahlias just do their thing, and they grow really quick. Oh, just one final tip we've got to mention. If you want to keep dahlias frowning for a long time, keep deadheading them. The actual dead flowers and the flowers are about to come out look very similar. The difference is flowers that are about to come out are very rounded. The dead flower heads are more of an acorn kind yeah. of pointy shape. That's how you know the difference. Yeah, that's a really good tip as well. Do you know, I'm just looking at the dates. You're right, so by the time your plants arrive, we'll be pretty much into February, won't we? Yes, I mean, it's for winter. Sometimes you do get orders delivered the next day, but whatever, we've only got a few days to go. And February's a short month as it well. It is, so. it's, oh, it's one day longer. And then it's year. March, officially spring. Yes, so, yes. We are getting there. Uh, right, so just quickly, so I know we're nearly out of time. If you've only just found us, you can watch all of the shows uh, by streaming them on YouTube or on our website. So once the live shows are finished, Within 24 hours, they are uploaded onto YouTube and on our website as well. Can I just, have I got time to quickly show you where you find them on our website, the old shows? We might not have time. But um, if you've got a smart TV, go to the YouTube app, type in New Garden, and then the latest shows all come up, and even some of the older ones as well. So go to Smart TV, put on the YouTube app, find us there, or on our website. So we're live right now. Click there. If we're not live, you'll see this page. There you go. Watch our latest show or miss a show, and you can catch it there. So there's the shows from uh, there's a Sunday show from the weekend. There you go. And any other shows. And yesterday's show will be there probably at the end of today. So yes, if you ever miss a show, then you can stream them in your in your own your leisure own time, time whenever you want to, yeah. which is brilliant. Uh, we are back live, though, this Sunday, 10 o'clock till 2 o'clock, don't forget, as well. Right. Lavender. 
Absolute favourite, three ninety nine for one, or you can go for the triple deal, three for eight pounds and ninety nine pence. It's pretty hard to go wrong with lavender, isn't it? These lavenders are amazing. Compact, fragrant, evergreen, fabulous quality plants. Great for poor soils, dry soils. Yep. Great for those really hot, dry, sunny, windy positions where everything struggle. Magnificent, gorgeous blue flowers that are going to attract the bees, butterflies, pollinating insects. You can dry the flowers. You can use the flowers in aromatherapy. In, you, know, you can even use them to flavour ice creams and biscuits. And Oh, you can actually, yeah, can't you? Yeah. Such a diverse plant. Um, come up year after year after year. Yeah, just and, gorgeous. And I do remember in that really hot summer two years ago, so many of my plants were just really struggling. You're right, the lavender they didn't care. Lavender loved it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So nice sunny spot, well-drained soil, but if the soil's really poor, that doesn't matter. And I like what you said, Adam, about you really want to plant lavender en masse. It doesn't like to be amongst other plants. No, it? no, it wants to be on its own, really open and sunny. Don't, don't make it compete with other plants because it won't, you know right out in the open somewhere super the sunniest most open brightest spot you can give it that's where it'll be happiest yeah. and i actually i i wanted to do lavender can look great in a natural country country garden but also it's often used in formal gardens and i created a, a formal garden here uh just lavender and book sauce that lavender I, it was the size that you're getting now, and honestly, when I first put it in, it looked quite sparse, but within a couple of years, just covered. Yeah, yeah. Well, you I put, mean, covered. You, right plant, right place. Yeah. And it's absolutely loving it, Sean. It's just thriving there. And it, um, it's getting the heat off of all the stonework as well around yeah, your house. Yeah, it it's does. It's also yeah. really liking. It's getting all the light reflected off that stonework as well. You, you, you basically, you, you've given it lavender, lavender nirvana. That's yeah. why it's rewarding you. But equally, just if you want to put those in pots, they look fantastic in pots. They're great they? in pots. Then if you've got them in pots, you can bring them right up to outside the patio doors and stuff, get those we have wonderful yeah. aromas and brush past it and get the fragrance um, of lavender as well. And even if you're just buying one lavender today at 3 99 you still get your free gift worth only £20. Shh, I didn't tell you that. Right. Um, now, I'm, I'm, I'm about to have my dinner. There's my plate for my dinner. Your dinners are quite small, aren't they? <laughs> I want a diet. Uh, that, God, I, I, I'd need a bigger plate than that after a day of gardening, I tell you. How big is that plate? Big-ish, isn't it? It's like... It, you know, it probably isn't even eight inches, actually, right? But I'm on a, I'm on a slight diet for, the, for January. Um, but anyway, the reason I'm holding my dinner plate is because you've got dinner plate dailies, which, to be fair, Adam, you're right, these are probably going to get even bigger than that plate. Yeah, I mean... Up again, to eight inches, each flower. Look at those, Sean. Just a knockout, aren't they? And, you know, don't somebody tell me those colours don't work together, those colours work together. They do. They just look magnificent. You know, who cares you've got pink with yellow or orange with red? No, well, orange and red it works. Yeah, just amazing. Easy to grow, months and months of flower, make spectacular cut flowers. Just incredible plants, middle to the back of the border. Um, just joy for so, so long. Great for kids to grow as well, because dahlias are really easy to grow. Yeah, magnificent plants. And they're working out today. If you double up, 10 tubers for 14.98. One, one around about £1.50 each. And I always think when you look at, you could buy a bedding plant in a garden centre in summer for £2.50 in a nine centimetre pot. And that bedding plant, that one petunia, We'll do something really nice for, for a few months that year, and that's it. Gone forever. But, yeah. Dead after that. But a dahlia, when you think about the big display each one of these will give, yeah. and year after year, your know, dahlias, generally speaking, do come back year after year. Some people do uh, dig them up and protect them over winter. Some people leave them in the ground. It does depend where you live at, would it say, does. doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it depends if we have a really extreme winter yeah. or an average winter, but dozens and dozens of flowers per dahlia yeah. as well. That's the great thing about them. And I, I particularly like dahlias because they come mid to late summer yeah. into autumn. So they're giving you that color, they're giving you that interest and other things are sort of faded and gone. But of course, if you bought the gladioli today as well, they're gonna be flowering at a similar yeah. time to the dahlias. So you don't always think that late summer is, is a time for things to, to fade away because dahlias, gladioli, etc. they just keep the magic going. Well, um, sadly, we can't keep the magic going. We're gonna to have to say goodbye. Adam, that was an absolute joy. I enjoyed it today, Sean. Yeah, so nice Fantastic. to see you again. And yeah. I've, I, so working with Adam today, I've definitely picked up a few little hints and tips, and I uh, hope you have too. So don't forget, you can keep ordering after the show. 
Use alpha code YGTV0424. We are live again this Sunday at 10 o'clock till 2 o'clock. And uh, don't forget, our lovely Bex is going to be on QVC tonight at 5 o'clock with you, Garden, as well. So from myself, Sean Ryan, and Adam Wilcott, we'll see you very soon here on You Garden TV.